Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy, happy holidays as we get ready for another day closer to New Year's Eve. Uh, one day in a wake up. It'll be Saturday. Sunday starts the new year. Happy Thursday, December 29th, 2020. Uh, and happy Hoop Spaces. Thank you for making Hoop Spaces uh, any part of your day, no matter where you are. Uh, shout out to our sponsor, SlamGoods.com. Uh, you can check them out over at SlamGoods.com. You can use promo code HoopSpaces, say 15%. Also partnered with AudioLabs.io. Uh, head over to our YouTube channel, and you can see what they do for us powering uh, our show over there. Uh, unedited, so you can get full context anytime you miss out. Head over to the Hoop Spaces YouTube page. Hit subscribe, powered by AudioLabs.io. Uh, and also, big ups to Playback TV. Uh, we'll be getting back to Playback after the holiday break, uh, as will the review. The review will be back uh, after the uh, 1st of uh, January. I'm having to transition over to Substack as Twitter shuts down uh, review. All right, uh, lots to get to in the world of the NBA. Uh, MVP Big Board. Uh, East-West Conference standings and last night's games. Be back in 30. Good morning. All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. You know what to do. I'm only going to try to ask this a few times. Uh, please like and retweet the show card. That is the very, very first card uh, here on the big board. I like that big board. Uh, it's always a great day to talk ball. We are here now. Episode 291. That's right. 291 uh, in a little over a season and a half of NBA basketball coverage. Shout out to everybody who subscribed to the review. Um, just a reminder, we, we are shutting it down early because Twitter has decided to shut it down despite paying millions of dollars to purchase it. Um, I am transitioning it over to Substack. We will be bringing it back up after the holidays. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, it's real simple to subscribe. You can actually go to the profile page uh, and find it. Uh, also, uh, if you have yet to pick up your merchandise, it has already been delivered uh, to the first several people who placed orders in. I will get the Hoop Spaces merchandise uh, link up there in a second. Uh, may I suggest a hoodie? It's cold out there, and these hoodies will keep you warm. $45, and, and the profit and the proceeds there go directly to creating content. Uh, and I do want to say, with the Substack, there's also going to be an option to be able to support uh, Hoop Spaces uh, similar to uh, NPR style, you know, keep us independent $10 a month if you can. Uh, and and I tell you, if we do get a minimum of 50 uh, people who are able to do that, we would then have met our full season goals. And I can tell you this much, uh, if all, we are to meet our full season goals before uh, halfway through the NBA season, the only thing that's going to happen is bigger, better things. So thank you uh, for everybody who's been able to support all right, uh, there you go. Uh, like and retweet the show card for me. That's part of the uh, equation here. Uh, it gives me, uh, I guess, Twitter capital. Uh, also, uh, if you want to engage and interact, like I, I respond. Just look at the replies. Uh, I, I try to get to as many as I can, but let's be honest. It's a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of energy. I'll try to do better. There you go. A um, couple of news and notes throughout the league. Uh, we'll get to later. Uh, first, though, I'm going to go ahead and get these out the way uh, as I wait to bring up the, the people to, that make the show what it is. I want to get the men's and women's college basketball top 25 scores out of the way, uh, and then we will bring it back a little bit later to do a reset because uh, there's a lot of action coming off of the Christmas break. Uh, on the men's side, we open up with UConn staying undefeated, defeating Villanova 74-66. Uh, they are now 14-0. 3-0 and in the Big East. Houston, 89-50 over Tulsa. Uh, they are 13-1. and uh, They're ranked third. Tennessee is seventh. 63-59 over Ole Miss. Alabama over Mississippi State, 78-67. And 
in the battle of the 8 and 21 seeds. Uh, Arkansas loses to LSU in Baton Rouge. And ladies and gentlemen, the SEC, uh, once much maligned uh, in college basketball, is set to have five or six uh, teams in the top 25 uh, come this time next week, LSU 60-57 over Arkansas. Arkansas falls to 11-2. and two. LSU uh, improves to 12-1. and one. Gonzaga, this is not fair. 120-42 over Eastern Oregon. Like It's just, it wasn't fair. Uh, Baylor beat Nichols uh, 85-56. Virginia beat Albany 66-46. TCU beat Central Arkansas 103-57. Missouri upsets Kentucky uh, in Columbia, 89-75. Missouri about to be in the top 25 at 12-1 and one now. Kentucky is 8-4. and four. Auburn defeats Florida, 61-58. Xavier beats St. John's, 84-79. Uh, New Mexico beat Colorado State, 88-69. New Mexico, number 22 in the top 25, undefeated at 13-0. and 0. Uh, One game canceled, uh, University of Vermont, uh, at Miami, Miami ranked number 14, uh, 12 and 1. Game was canceled. We'll get into that later. Uh, women's top 25, only three games. Nebraska loses to the 14th ranked Michigan Wolverines, 76 59. UConn, ranked number 8, defeats Creighton, ranked number 21, 72 47. Uh, Ohio State, ranked number 3, uh, just, just blows up Northwestern, 81 40. Eight. All right, there you go. Your college top 25 men's and women's scores. Uh, now on to the NBA. If you wanted to come up, uh, get those hands up because now we're ready to go. Uh, we'll say our good mornings uh, and we'll get into the NBA scores. Uh, first up, we'll say good morning to six of the 12. Six, good morning. How you doing? Exactly how I wanted to start out the show. Uh, riveting answer. Uh, the Pelicans looked phenomenal last night. Uh, looked like Zion Williamson uh, ate Rudy Gobert for breakfast, lunch, and dinner uh, after Rudy Gobert uh, unceremoniously had pancakes for his pregame meal. Uh, lesson of the day, don't eat pancakes. They're overrated. Uh, we'll go next to Joe. Joe the Historian, a.k.a. EMS. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Chris. I just wanted to say, I wanted to iterate that. I, I listened to the um, show yesterday. It was a great show. and give you your props on that. And um, I looked at your MVP um, rankings, and I have to say, like, um, somebody who had a triple, a 16.21 um, rebound triple-double is third, and Giannis is sixth, and Embiid is eighth. And Kevin Durant is too. I think you know, saying because he's on my team, I think Kevin Durant is MVP. But I, I, I'm, I like your MVP um, rankings. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, like um, I'm hoping everything is okay. That sounded like an ambulance. I was about to say, um, well, what did you get into to have the cops like just out your door? But I hope everything is good, and, and I appreciate it. It is, it is hard to do like MVP rankings, and, and let me tell you. Uh, there have been some passionate uh, Boston Celtics fans, uh, Jason Tatum fans, uh, in my DMs <laughs> this morning. Um, and my reply, for all of you who do not understand, uh, y'all need to understand that Jalen Brown will siphon votes away from Jason Tatum. Okay? So if I am looking at it and I see uh, Jason Tatum getting four votes uh, versus Nikola Jokic getting four votes, uh, what that is is Jason Tatum getting three and Jokic getting four, right? So, like, yeah, there, there is a bit of a penalty, uh, but that is really more so due to the great play uh, of Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. And this has happened before to every duo other than Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. There you go. Uh, Micah, good morning. Yo, we are killing it today. Man, Chris. <laughs> hey, good morning to you, Chris. <laughs> Man. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, I got to talk about this. Like, it's disturbing when somebody makes history 
and then you got all these people trying to poo-poo it, and they just say, well, it's the Knicks. Okay. We celebrate Wilt's 100 points. You want to know what the record was for the Knicks that season? 22 and 60. We don't talk about whenever we celebrate Kobe's and James Harden's historic nights. We don't say, oh, well, it's Orlando. It's just like, stop the hate, man. Appreciate greatness. I don't know if you started off your morning bad. Maybe you started off with loose, floppy bread and pumpkin spice latte, but do better. That's it. Got to do better. Like, it's not hard. Like, somebody asked me, what, did I, what, what do I tell my son? Like, what are your goals for the day? My goal for the day is to be 1% better than yesterday. Or that that's making my bed, brushing my teeth, cooking breakfast, 1% better. Like, it's not hard. Like, it's not hard to learn to not burn your bacon. Like, if you just take your time and learn how to not burn your bacon. That's another thing. Uh, we'll go. <laughs> we'll go next to uh, Uncle Bleed, who probably hates the fact that Jason Tatum is four on my NBA MVP big board. It's it's crazy to me that y'all have that you have him so low. Is he not the best player on the best team in the NBA? Well, first, first, Jones, first, like, four, no, four, four is no, not low. Is is four Kyrie is not Irvin, low. Does Kyrie Irving not exist. Kyrie Irving does exist. Has he had the same season as Jalen Brown? No. Let me ask you this. How many all-NBAs does Jalen Brown have compared to Ben Simmons? What does that have to do with a team in China? But we're acting like Jason Tatum has this all-NBA player playing next to him, and he's never made an all-NBA team. He's never been an NBA um, all-star starter. He's made one NBA all-star team. The the rest of these MVP candidates have all-stars that they're playing with besides Luka. See, I, I love how this happens uh, to be a both sides argument that you're trying to lay out here, right? Well, no, I'm because, rebuttaling what you just well, said. No, no, because Jalen Brown's all-star status has nothing to do with this year's production. Jalen Brown's all-star status has nothing to do with this year's production. That's, Zero. That's crazy. Yeah, what? Why? Why does it matter if he's been an all-star in the past or not? When we're talking about this season's production, because this. Wait, wait, wait. This is not the first time that this argument has been made. Let's let's put that in perspective, right? I've already <laughs> said that. It's so then, been made so then, with Michael, everybody other than Michael Jordan. Jordan. Michael crazy. Jordan is the only dude in history who's gone through multiple MVP campaigns without having to worry about his number two. So I guess Larry Bird didn't play with multiple Hall of Famers in the 80s and got three did, and got did three he, MVPs. Did he have to worry about a second player who was as good as him? It's, so are we saying that Jalen Brown? That's why Jalen Brown's in my top 10. People are perennially underrating Jalen Brown. Yeah, you're good. I'm, first of all, whoa, whoa, whoa. Jalen Brown is my favorite player in the NBA. I am not. The, the point that and, I am making is he should not be siphoning votes from Jason Tatum. That's crazy to me. But what I'm saying is that's reality. And also what I'm saying is Jalen Brown is perennially underrated. I, I agree with that part of it, but doesn't isn't the equalizer to that or the offsetter to that due to the overall record? They have the best record in the NBA and have had that the entire season besides like maybe three days. And but then if you want if you want to go into that, they also open up with one of the weakest uh, strength of schedule. Okay, where us. where Denver where Denver o- wait where season. Denver opened up with a far tougher record had more injuries in their three games behind. So what you're saying is Jason Tatum is not going to win the MVP this year because he has a he has a running mate with him that is too good for him to to win the MVP. So what what saying I'm saying is, is that, that is that is most likely going to happen. So by that argument, Kevin Durant by the end of this season should fall victim to the exact same thing because the Nets are moving in the exact same direction that the Celtics are moving in right now. Yes. Okay, well, then I can I can I can't argue that then. Yes. Like, like, again, see, I think the problem is most people, they see these rankings and they view static rankings like this is from ESPN and NBA. No, not like my rankings go based on three main factors, uh, statistical production, right? What we call quantitative value. What is their value to the team, which that entails record, strength of schedule, other contributing factors such as the players they play with. Right. Uh, And then the third part is attrition. Right. 
There's you're going to run through attrition throughout the season. How do they handle attrition? How did KD handle his attrition? Well, they won 10 in a row. After all the stuff the Nets went through, he carried them through that, right? Like he was uh, the Titanic that actually didn't sink. And now they're right behind you. Right. <laughs> so is that not a better, you know, qualitative, quote, narrative, right? The story. The only issue that I have with that is if you are going to use the Jalen Brown argument, which is fine, use it. I, I rebuttal that with KD is playing with Kyrie and Ben Simmons. Oh, yeah, I've got no problem with that, which is why I've already told a couple people, like, I'm expecting Jokic to walk through here and, and get a third MVP because, like, when we're going to look back at it, he'll be the one of the top two statistical dominating players this season. And what did he have? Maybe 55 games of Jamal Murray, maybe 50 games of Michael Porter Jr. Dude's got his team at the top of the West with Bruce Brown. Just saying. Uh, we'll get Uncle Bleed back up. He had a call. You you know, I love him. Uh, he'll come back. We'll go back and forth. Uh, we'll now say good morning to 6 of the 12 who should be here and ready. Yeah, man. Good morning. Uh, I don't know if you called on me earlier. Uh, I was having a Oh, yeah. you Right right off the bat, bro. You I, got the horns. I know. I had to back out. I had um, – I, I, I don't know what happened. Connection issues. I couldn't hear anything, so I just backed out and joined back in. Um. <clears throat> But no, man, that was a nice, spicy way to start up the the morning, man. I, I actually, I actually enjoyed that. It got, you know, it was, it was nice. Um, it's a lot more fight than what um, the Minnesota Timberwolves put up last night, as far as um, all the comments they made after the game about how soft they are about guarding Zion. I just um, saying that Zion is playing football. They're playing basketball. You can't touch Zion. You can't breathe on him. You can't guard him. Um, I mean, <clears throat> if you actually watch games that Zion plays, uh, he <laughs> he literally gets hacked every single time he goes to the rim. Like, and there's so many times with Bird, they don't even call it because they expect Zion to play through it. So like. Like you can even see in the first half, I don't know if you watched the game or not, Chris, but in the first half, Zion was getting no calls at all. Um, and he had a he had a couple of turnovers because he wasn't playing strong through the, you know, through the contact. And then like you saw him kind of like like anytime you ever see Zion Williamson talking out the side of his mouth, uh, on the way back down the court, you might call it crazy, but that's his way of letting you know that it's about to get real. Um, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get all to that later. Uh, good morning, Chris. Retweet the show card. Um, and yeah, man, great day. All right, appreciate it, man. And and like you, like he said, you know, go ahead and uh, retweet that show card. Um, like it's it's a hard it's a hard conversation uh, to have when we're basically halfway through the season, right? We are, um, I think, for the most part, for most teams, six games away from their 41st game. And I said this before, that we're going to get to the point where some of these narratives are just going to be nasty. And I have tried to warn you about this Zion Williamson MVP narrative that's going to take off. And what happens is you, you have these teams uh, and, and their social media department and their PR department, like their job is to put their team and their players in the best light, right? And so when you get to the idea of the MVP, every team's social department and PR department, like they're chopping at the bits to try to say why their players deserve these accolades, right? So like every play, every team has a quote MVP. The question then is how do you discern what is more valuable? And that, that becomes the subjective part. And, and uh, let's take Zion Williamson. Last night, career high, 43-12. Uh, and 12, Like, his last 12 games, dude's averaging, what, 30-plus, 8-plus, 6-plus, 4-plus? Like, what, what do you want him to do? What else does Zion Williamson have to do to tell you, hey, I'm here and I'm ready? And, like, if his team's up top and he can't be stopped – like, what do you do? 
you, you've got to give him credence, right? But then somebody's got to fall off. Man, I'm telling you, I love these MVP talks. We'll go to uh, Michael real quick. He'll respond. Uh, we'll say good morning to JF, Joel, uh, Joel the uh, Dutch Nets fans, and Anas. Thank you, everybody. Michael, 30 seconds. Yeah, real quick, man. Um, so, look, having a consistent duo is always siphon both. Like, Real Talk Shaq and Kobe are two top ten players of all time, and they got one MVP because they play together in their prime. So I'm sorry, but, yeah, that narr- that part of the narrative is, is there, and especially when your team can win when you put up 14 points. That kind of hurts, too. But that's all I got. Yeah, I, and you know what? Like, but I would say if I was a Boston fan – I would be happy that I got two players on a top 10. And, like, honestly, the only reason why Jalen Brown is 10 is because Jason Tatum is four. If Jason Tatum wasn't playing and Jalen Green was producing uh, what he's doing and, and Boston was where they were, Jalen Brown would be up there. Like, it's, 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 a, hard, it's a hard talk, man. MVP's tough. Uh, we'll say good morning to uh, JF, Joel, and Anas next. Uncle Bleeds back up. He had to do something for work. JF, good morning. Morning, Chris. Uh, good morning, anybody that woke up to some coffee seats or warm weather. It's a great day for Miami Heat. We we'll get into it. Man, it sounds like you did need some coffee. <laughs> that is not the normal JF we hear, but it's all good. Uh, Joel, uh, good afternoon, sir. How are you doing? Dang, man. You really going to make me do this? I mean, I gave you extra time, too. I had to log back in. Uh, You're talking to me? Yes! Uh, Sorry, (laughs) man. (laughs) Sorry, I tried paying attention, but good morning or good afternoon, I should say. I even said good afternoon. Oh, wow. I feel bad, Chris. I do. You should. You should. (laughs) But I have an excuse, man. I work in finance, and I'm in the middle of year-end closing, so... Oh, oh, uh, then, then I, I accept your apologies uh, because I don't like doing my own budgeting audits, let alone other people's uh, financial you know, dealings. Yeah, it ain't easy. <laughs> All right. Uh, congratulations. How are you doing? Uh, what do you have for us today? Uh, and then we'll say what's up to Nas real quick. Yeah, so I'm, I'm doing great. Um, stressful day at work, but um, I did get to, in between, uh, watch the Nets game. So it was an awful game. Like, the Nets played trash, and Jacques Vaughn has these lineups that he keeps putting in there. I don't know if he's a masochist or if he likes punishing us fans. I don't know, like, you know, with putting Seth Curry and Patty Mills on the court at the same time, you know, shit like that. But... Um, Anyway, uh, win is a win, 10 straight. Um, He's still not getting enough media attention, but I guess that's okay. I think I'm going to start a compilation of the wildest things that people said about the Nets this season, like Kendrick Perkins said that we were not going to make the playoffs. Uh, Michael Wilbon said (laughs) that we're going to be fifth at best, fifth at best in the East. And um, I forgot, I got a third, a third one that was also crazy, but I can't think of it right now. But I'm going to compile a list of all the crazy things that uh, NBA media said um, about us. And, um, yeah, and we're going to keep just, proving them wrong. Just, just make sure when you do that you put in there that I said give them 35 games. He did. You did. I and that's said a give thing to you 35. Yeah. yeah. That, where are you? Be happy. Right now, be happy. Like you should be happy because you know you're one injury away from falling out. <laughs> and by the way, you don't win that game last night without Patty Mills. Shout out to Patty Mills. Yeah, you did. I found it difficult to say. He hit a couple of uh, trees that we really needed, you know. But Seth and Patty also got keep getting cooked on defense, right? So I, I'm not so sure about that one. Man, Twitter's soundboard sucks. Just throwing it out there. Um, no, nah, but he was three for three from three, and he had uh, three free throws. So he was three Fair for enough. three from three for three and three for three from the line. That's Fair telling enough. me that I, sh- I should go pick threes and pick all threes. 
Yes, clearly. I'm going to do that. If I win, I'm going to laugh at everybody. Uh, Anas, good morning. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Uh, hope everyone's doing well. I'm chilling here. Every time my Miami Heat and LeBron plays, it's an emotionally confusing night for me. I'm, I'm a Miami Heat <laughs> fan first, but I love LeBron. I'm a, I'm a LeBron fan second, so... Uh, you know, it's always an emotionally confusing night. But, you know, my Heat got the dub. You know, when, Le- when LeBron's in the game, I'm always watching him. But when LeBron's out of the game, there's there's nothing to watch with that atrocious team. Uh, and LeBron gave us some content to, and some thoughts to think about. And, uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to it. Interesting night last you night. See the, uh, did you see the uh, LeBron SpongeBob meme from last night? No, I didn't. Okay, I'll try to find it for you. Um, they have LeBron as Squidward looking out from Squidward's house uh, oh. at Patrick Ed and SpongeBob, who are Jimmy I and Ben. I saw that one. I did see that one actually. Yeah. Um, Tastefully hey, done. I mean, if he's talking about you know playing at a winning position, there's no team other than the Miami Heat, who, like, Pat Riley says it all the time, like, we don't rebuild, like, I don't do that. As bad as the team is, they try to compete. There was a season a couple years ago, we started the season at 11 and 30, the first half of the season, and then the second half of the season, we were 30 and 11. We just missed the playoffs, but it's just, like, the mentality with the Heat is we, we're not a rebuilding team, and we, if that's just not the standard, so... Hey man, LeBron. All right, we're good. The door's always open. Hey, Pat Riley said a couple <laughs> years ago, the the key is always under the doormat. All right, well, we're gonna go ahead and play an early game of trivia, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we'll, we'll go to whoever's up on stage that wants to play. Y'all, hey, y'all have no idea okay. what the trivia. Your game. All right, Jay the Wakanda in this game, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, everybody say good morning, Jay. 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 Yeah. Um, good morning, all right. Y'all. What's up? Here is the game. Who was the better Los Angeles Laker? All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a name. You have to tell me if they were better or worse than Dennis Schroeder. Wayne Gabriel. No. Incorrect. He was better. Ten points, four for four. One for oh, three from about deep. Last night? Are you yes. talking about his... Yes. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Bro, what do you mean? Other than uh, last night, he's always better. I thought, I thought we were what? talking no. career. I was like, uh, Juan, Juan Toscano Anderson. Yes. Austin Reeves. No. Austin Reeves played better. I don't know about that. 20 minutes. 0 for 5. Negative nine box score. Wait, I, I will agree to disagree. <laughs> he played on that better. <laughs> Russell Westbrook. Yes. All right, good job. He's getting it. Um, Patrick Beverly. Yes, he hit a three. Yes. <laughs> Patrick Beverly finished negative thirteen. Schroeder finished negative twelve. LeBron James. I would argue Pat Bev played better defense, but whatever. <laughs> um, LeBron James? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we had to end it on a positive note. There's your breakdown of the Los Angeles Lakers. Uh, at one point, ladies and gentlemen, they had Lonnie Walker, Austin Reeves, Russell Westbrook, Troy Brown Jr., and Juan Toscano Anderson all on the court at the same time. At that point in time, Troy Brown Jr. was the best Laker on the floor. Hey, Chris. Go ahead, Jim. Just, just wait till forty-year-old Trevor Ariza and, and Kendrick Nunn get back. Okay, <laughs> you just, you just wait. <laughs> we'll be waiting. Uh, JF, we'll go ahead and start breaking down these games right after these scores. Uh, last night, ladies and gentlemen, a full slate of games: the Detroit Pistons beat the Orlando Magic one twenty-one one hundred one. The Wizards housed the Suns, not even close. 127, 102. Uh, the, the Nets, um, I, I, I mean, they won, but we're not going to talk about necessarily how the Nets won. We're going to talk about how the Hawks lost as uh, Nate McMillan left two timeouts in the bag. 
108, 107 Nets over the Hawks. Heat beat the Lakers 112, 98, prompting J- uh, um, LeBron James uh, to to basically bare his soul <laughs> last night. Uh, the Bulls shocked the Bucks in overtime 119, 113. Uh, still, nobody trusts the Chicago Bulls. Uh, the Pelicans beat the Timberwolves 119, 118. Zion Williamson career night uh, basically ended Rudy Gobert's career uh, as a interior phenomenal defender because that, I mean, it was bad. Uh, Warriors beat the Jazz 112, 107. Um, if if the West doesn't start separating, uh, they're in trouble. Cause, cause what right now the Warriors are getting ready to be primed to do a slingshot just like they did last year, uh, and, and bounce back up to the top uh, of the Western Conference Finals uh, after Steph returns from injury. Uh, the Kings outlast the Nuggets in probably the game of the night uh, in the game of two quarters. The Nuggets dominated the four, uh, first. The Kings dominated the fourth. Uh, we'll talk about it. One twenty-seven, one twenty-six. You have the NBA big board up here for the MVP as well as the Eastern and Western Conference standings, if you have anything that uh, comes out of mind. If you cannot hop up here, uh, hop down there and, and say what's up in the chat box. Uh, I'll get there momentarily. We'll go to JF Cake next to start breaking down the Miami Heat and Los Angeles Lakers. JF, go ahead. Yeah, Chris. Uh, one thing I got to give myself credit is multitasking. I'm here to take care of baby, but he's good now. He's chilling. So last night's game, uh, we have to understand, once LeBron left, it is what it is, LeBron. Like, we love you, but, you know, the grass is not always green on the other side. And I think I said it best yesterday when I said that a lot of these teams messed up when they did get LeBron after Miami and not follow Miami's footstep and not listen to LeBron, uh, leave his homeboys out of decision-making and all that. Uh, this is what you saw last night. Um, this this season has reminded me a lot of Kobe's season when he had uh, the Nick Youngs and the Robert. I forgot his last name. Uh, the, the ball headed dude, and then they got uh, a lot of these other guys. And Kobe was just like, "Man, what what is going on here?" Um, and I think that's a lot to do with the front office and their decision making. Uh, again, I don't think they should have let go of Magic Johnson. But last night's game, man, Tyler Hero with a plus twenty nine. This man is, is looking dangerous. I understand he's not scoring no twenty points, but if he doesn't score twenty points, the man is doing everything he can to, you know, facilitate and, and, and bring us to a better position on the ball court. Uh, Last night, it was literally LeBron James and uh, Russell Westbrook. I didn't see anybody else, but Jimmy looked like Jimmy and Ben came back. They look amazing. Um, But the most intriguing part about it is when LeBron, I thought LeBron was going to sit after he did play against Orlando, but he didn't sit. And I think he was trying to prove something. And I think his dreams got shattered when he tried to prove something. And uh, Eric Spolstra and Pat Ryder let him know like, Hey, come back home and i and i and i appreciate you know that little fair warning call and i I think this begins the uh the whole chapter of lebron leaving and returning to his real home which is south beach uh he needs to be you know more stable he shouldn't be playing player and general manager at the same time he's a little bit too old in his career as a basketball player to be doing that it's not time to be him for him to be a general manager so he can come back home uh there's a plenty of houses he can get um, I think he, uh, I think he's done with the Lakers. Wait, doesn't he still have a house there? Yeah, uh, no, he sold it. I remember when sure he, he left. Sold it, yeah. yeah, I remember when he left. That was okay. the first picture that came out of LeBron like leaving us. Because I, I thought he, I thought he had two places. I thought he had the one place in Miami. Then I thought he had another place outside of Miami. Um, he probably does have one outside of Miami, but like obviously he's not. Why would he? stay outside of Miami if he plays for Miami. Like, he can definitely buy a house, like, two feet away uh, on the water. <laughs> so, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he has options. But that picture did come out when he was leaving. Like, oh, there goes the moving trucks. But I think he he can find his way back here, um, especially if uh, we're able to give up some first-rounders um, and get rid of that Kyle Lowry contract. If the man's willing to take 25 and, and finish off with a chip, then, hey, come back home. But if not... Wow. It is. It is what wow. it is, Chris. Like you know, the 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 prostrating has begun. But I'm just saying, Chris. Like we have to make smart decisions. Like not everybody is Tom Brady. You get what I'm saying? And, and I think Tom Brady did leave a good situation to come to a team in Florida that has a stable team and a stable franchise. Uh, you know what I'm saying, Chris? I like, think. I, I think. I think Tom. I think Tom Brady's done a lot in um, 
I don't I don't particularly care for Tom Brady. So I hope he grows up. You know, that's all I care about. Let me get an Austin hey, here for his take. What what Joe? Ain't ain't that a reach for Miami fans because didn't they say the same thing when he went to Cleveland the other um a couple of weeks no. ago? Like no, because he's LeBron. Like like it's no reach. A- every team that can afford LeBron, it would be like, hey, you want to come play? Like he's he's still that good. He really is. Uh, Anas, your thoughts on the Heat? Uh, we'll go up to Jay to break down the Lakers side. Uh, then we're going to move on. We're going to actually talk uh, Wizards and Suns next, uh, and then we'll talk Pels and Timberwolves. Um, that 25-point housing by the Wizards, that's a bad loss, no matter how you put it, uh, for Phoenix. Anas, go ahead. Your thoughts on the Heat, and then we'll move up to Jay to Wakanda. I'm going to put on my Heat fan cap right now. I'm just gonna be t- So, like, uh... I mean, we played the passing lane super well. And you see that, you know, the game was decided on the turnovers. If you just, that's straight up 23 turnovers by the Lakers, I think. And I think five uh, for the Heat. You know, that disparity alone um, is not a formula that's going to win you a game if you're the Lakers. But, you know, and the Heat took advantage. uh, Had 30-something points off the turnovers. Uh, You saw contributions all over the board. Uh, and you know you saw Bam taking advantage of the lack of size that the Lakers have uh, in the paint and doing his thing, continuing his All Star caliber season. Um, I'm just gonna shift gears a little, put on my LeBron slash Lakers fan cap, and you know once they were in the hole, obviously you're digging yourself out of that hole. It's tough. Uh, but they were making a run, and they were making a legitimate run. And Troy Brown Jr. was a big part of that run. He was 4 for 5 from 3, and he was balling out. Uh, but that's exactly when, you know, when a player's red hot, that's exactly when Darvin Ham decides to sub him out and uh, put in Pat Beverly instead and all these guards for the Lakers. And, you know, that stifles any chance of a comeback. So, I mean, that's really the game in a nutshell because the, 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 the Lakers came back pretty close uh, and Troy Brown was hitting every important three in that, you know, quote-unquote comeback. But um, it is what it is. Uh, I mean, that's sort of my small take right now. All right. Appreciate it. We're going to go and get another uh, Lakers take here uh, by Jay the Wakana tech support. Uh, Lakers takes uh, Edwin Garcia may be able to stop by. We'll also maybe talk to him. Uh, maybe who faces Ryan as well. Uh, before Jay goes, I want to get some shout outs down below. Uh, Jose is down below. I'm going to go ahead and urge you to, to follow Jose uh, and tap into 77 spaces. Uh, was in a heat chat earlier today. And a uh, poll popped up that he put up there is Christian Wood, an all-star. Uh, go ahead and follow Jose. Answer with your thoughts. Hop in here so you can live uh, the, the, in the adulation of Luka Doncic greatness uh, because they will be recapping that game as well. Shout out to the pickup card game in the building. Make sure you go pick up your copy of the pickup card game over at slamgoods.com, our, our sponsor, and use promo code HoopSpaces and you'll save 15%. Uh, off of the pickup card game for a lifetime of memories. Go ahead and check it out and pick up your copy. Uh, Justin Patton, our YouTube coordinator in the building, ladies and gentlemen, uh, in talks uh, with somebody in the audience right now to come aboard with more reaction videos. Uh, and if you are a content creator and you have not done this yet uh, and you want to, uh, we got a home for you right here uh, on Hoop Spaces. Just reach out to Justin. All you got to do is shoot him a DM, say, you know what? Y'all are here every day. I want to try. Uh, just hit him up. He'll tell you what to watch so you can get your own idea of the format we're looking for. Uh, he'll get you set up on how to get your equipment lined up, and you'll be off and running. And we'll get you up here uh, loaded up onto the Hoop Spaces YouTube channel. Uh, and as we grow, you grow. Just like Justin is growing, just like we're growing. Uh, also, down below, ladies and gentlemen, Jasmine's in the building, writer. Covering the Dallas Wings for Winsider. Make sure you shoot her a follow as we get ever so closer to the WNBA season. Uh, definitely a dope follow. TJ Kiesel in the building, uh, host of the Kickback on Friday nights. If you are into shoes and fashion, uh, there are very few people uh, with the accessibility, knowledge, and temperament uh, that she has. So make sure you tune in. Uh, Jazzy Ray, 
oftentimes co-hosting another dope uh, black female creator, owner, entrepreneur, uh, doer of things, just like TJ. Make sure you shoot him a follow. Ralph Pels, uh, Pels and Whistles podcast on the Believe Network is here. And my man, Saint, uh, from Next Kingdom. All right, Jay, uh, close us out of this Heat and Lakers game. What you got? Um, only that I was right. Okay. I've been telling y'all for three years, it's over. Um, I knew that the Westbrook trade was the final nail in the coffin. But I knew this day was coming. I knew there was a day where it would be coming where LeBron would be stat padding um, and an ineffective stat padding. Phenomenal numbers, especially when you consider he's in year 20. But Anthony Davis should have been traded during that crazy hot month he had. And y'all let four or five games against the Pistons the Spurs, the Spurs, and the Spurs convince y'all that there was a good team in here somewhere. And there isn't. It's bad. There are no picks. That's why you don't trade the young core. That's why you don't trade AD for the young core and picks. This is why you don't do it. But y'all swore. Y'all swore down that LeBron was this magical unicorn basketball player. And he was still 2012 LeBron. And it didn't matter that he had dump truck agility Kyle Korver. Didn't matter if he had um, Gabriel, Stanley Johnson. LeBron was LeBron. And all they needed was AD to average 25. And the Lakers were going to win 50 games. And what that tells me is, Y'all really underrate LeBron, peak LeBron, as a defender. That's what LeBron can't do anymore. Yeah, LeBron can give you 26, 7, and 7 in his sleep. That's amazing. That is absolutely nuts. But he can no longer guard two people at the same time and be a rim deterrent. Because that's what prime LeBron was. An absolute terror. The thing that y'all keep telling me Ben Simmons is on defense, Bron actually was. <laughs> and he's not that anymore. Oh. Why you got to so get the you shot up in, man? Stat line, when you look at Bron's stat line, I want you to say to yourself in your soul, man, at this point in time, LeBron James is a gigantic version of Bradley Beal. Because when you look at the Wizards record and you look at the Lakers record, they're mirror images of each other. The Lakers might be worse now. Mm. That was a good that was a good that was a good take. <laughs> so just have that in your mind. That when you're trading for LeBron, when you want LeBron, when you you're getting a 6'9", 250, 270-pound version of Bradley Bill. I'll take him. Stop I'll it, give man. you Tobias stop Harris. It. Stop it. Stop. <laughs> no, no, no. Stop it. No, I, won't, I will not stop it. Listen, man. <laughs> you, just said, you should have traded for 80 for the you young see a player when you got a in front of, of it? him and they go, whoa, whoa. A First championship, ball. enough. This is the Lakers, bro. We think it dynasty. You got a time you got a championship, bro. You tied you tied the Celtics. You've been behind them for 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 eternity and you tied the Celtics with the championship. They want more. Yeah, I don't understand what he's talking about. Like they want more. They, they were tied. See, the the problem the the problem is just like in in Brooklyn, Los Angeles when they signed uh LeBron, they were told they would have multiple championship parades. Right, like, like that's that's what that's why we can always get on the Brooklyn Nets fans. Like, we don't even care if you win this year because we were told multiple. Like, they made the same mistake that LeBron made in Miami. Not one, not two, not three, and the Lakers did the same. And then they doubled down when they won in the bubble. They doubled down, and you know what? The house always wins in the end. It's a house year. Look at the league. Miami, let's run it back. The house says, nah, bro. 
you'll be a six seed and like it. Like that's that's what that's the beauty of sports. You get the Pelicans up here, they are young and hungry, and Zion is carrying them without their second best player. Shout out Trey Murphy. Hey, that's a, hey, that's a joke if you don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we got the Suns out here. They thought they could run it back with a disgruntled uh, disgruntled center. And you know what happens? They get housed 127, 102 uh, by the Washington Wizards, who are now who are now 15 and 21. Ladies and gentlemen, they've won three in a row. They are one West game Coast. out of the play in. Chris, can I say one thing? They won three in a row on the West Coast. Go ahead. I just want to say uh, last night, Juan Toscano Anderson said that the Heat were one of the toughest teams he's played. So he was on the championship team last year. So that's a lot of credit uh, for us just being 500. Oh, stop it. Just because Juan Toscano Anderson is the perfect. You want to ring? You know, vet. Yeah, he knows what to say. Oh, Miami, man, they are tough. I mean, it just it just brings the question: (laughs) What happens if we were in the finals instead of Boston? That's all I'm saying. But but you but no, but what it doesn't bring up the question for you is what is he saying in the locker room? They ain't got a shot. Two things can be true at the same time. It also doesn't. It also (laughs) doesn't bring up the fact that a player saying this that's on an expiring contract, so he's giving flowers to another potential (laughs) suitor of his services. Love it. Um, the deepness of, of veteran play here on and off the court. Uh, six out of the 12 has his hand up. I'm assuming he wants to add something to this Lakers heat discussion after this. Uh, I already started transition. We are going to talk Wizards because none of y'all want to ever talk Wizards. Well, they did something good, damn it, and we're going to praise them. Praise the Wizards. Six out of the 12, go ahead. You did all of that to do this? He's it's going to be one of those days. He's, going, he's doing his Rudy Gobert at the rim impersonation. Leave him alone. That's a good one, Jay. But, you know, I'm always down to talk with us. They're my sneaky league pass team. I definitely saw the Rui Hachimura show. All right, 6 out of 12, last, last chance. Last chance. What do you got? Three times and three strikes, you out. Like, this is bad. No, no, man. Like, I got locked out. I couldn't even press the mic on. Can you hear me? Yeah, we got you. That's that Verizon, huh? No, it's not. Man, that's crazy. Look, I just wanted to say um, the Heat, man, like, watching not- Panthers for the Heat. Um, if, they, if they're serious about, you know, making it, uh, you know, interesting. Yeah, this ain't this ain't working for six today. But uh, also, look, anytime the Pelicans win, yeah, he's trying. Hello, it's 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 bad. I think your Wi I think your Wi Fi is on and you're moving and you're jumping to different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you you yeah yeah yeah. You're gonna have to probably uh, log out, exit out the app, and and do all that jazz. But don't worry, Rells is here. She'll hold you down until you get back because next up we're talking Wizards anyway. Uh, Wizards, ladies and gentlemen, smashing the Suns, 127-102. This game was so booty um, that somehow DeAndre Ayton scored 31 points and I'm still trying to figure out how. I, 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 I mean, I saw every bucket he made and I'm still trying to figure out how because it's not like Anybody else was going to do anything. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, with the injuries that have beset the Suns, they started Chris Paul, uh, Mikael Bridges, and DeAndre Ayton, uh, three of their normal five. And then they threw in uh, Jock Landale and Torrey Gray. It and was... Jock is not a nickname. Yeah, and it was an eyesore. Um, and, like, the killer part is DeAndre Ayton was the best player on the floor. And even though he took 22 shots, it seemed as though a particular diminutive point guard went out of his way to not get him the ball more because nobody was stopping him. Uh, Washington, Kyle Kuzma, Corey Kispert, Christos Porzingis, Daniel Gifford, Monte Moore, uh, Daniel Gafford, Monte Morris. Uh, other words, uh, a ubiquitous uh, grayscale starting lineup that scares nobody needed a 30-point performance of Rui Hachimura 
11 for 13 off of the bench. Uh, more importantly, 7 for 8 from the free throw and 1 of 2 from deep. Uh, he is, he's been added in a lot of different trade scenarios. Uh, the Wizards are either wanting to get a, a top first-round pick uh, or they're trying to clear cap uh, is what I hear. So if, if you're trying to get Rui, uh, more than likely they're going to start asking uh, people to take on some contracts, uh, perhaps even Christoph Porzingis. All right, uh, look, I think this is it. Like I kind of said it in early in the beginning, uh, and I said at the beginning of the season, I don't expect the Suns to to bow out, but they're not a 68, uh, 60 win team any longer. I don't even think they're fifty five any longer. I think they might top out uh, at around fifty wins. Um, but I think what we're going to see is the, the the downfall of what the Suns are uh, in the internal structure as we get through this uh, uh, owner purchase. Uh, we'll go to the floor real quick. If you want to hop up here uh, and give the Wizards some praise. Uh, you'll go after Jay the Wakandan. Jay, what did you see from the Wizards beyond uh, probably the hottest name of the trade market, Kyle Kuzma, who went off for 22 points and a plus 34, looking like a legit number two option? Um, I saw a team that saw DeAndre Aiden in the paint for 36 minutes and decided that doesn't matter. Um. You're talking about a team that went 25 of 28 at the free throw line. And they won despite the Suns shooting 40, I would say 42% from three. But the issue with the Suns is that they're a jump shooting team. And so they don't get to the line that much despite uh, Mikael Bridges' gifts, uh, which is weird that he doesn't drive more and get more uh, free free throws. Um that's, that's a really weird thing to me. But DeAndre Aiden had zero blocks. Jock Landale, who played 16 minutes, who's listed at 6'11", had zero blocks. Dario Saric, although he played three minutes, let's not pick on him. Bismack <laughs> Biombo played eight <laughs> minutes. But they all have zero blocks. Chris Paul had two blocks last night. Exactly. So, <laughs> both our body Morris too. By the way, who's like an inch shorter? Yes. So, that was a Wizards team. To be honest, I would prefer my Grizzlies play like a lot of attacking the rim, a lot of deciding we're not going to settle for non-competitive threes. We know we don't shoot them well. Um. We're going to just keep attacking the basket and getting these uh, free throws. And they nailed them. I mean, it was an amazing night to watch a team shoot that many free throws. And they were just more physical. I mean, they out-rebounded the Suns by 16. Um, And I think with DeLon Wright playing 15 minutes, I'm not saying they've solved their point guard issue, but it looks like if they can figure out some sort of three-headed monster of Kuzma Morris and Daylon Wright initiating the offense, this team could go on a run. Um, if I were the Wizards, <laughs> they can. They can. They have uh, yeah, I, I mean, I can trip over the concrete, you know, um, but it's just it's not likely to happen. Nah, nah, they 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 have they have a funky thing going on where they're they're a weird lineup to match up against. They kind of zig while the rest of the league zags because Chris stops allows them to play five out or four out one in, but sometimes that one in is Kuzma if he has a mismatch and or after a switch. And so there are some real, real funky things oh, that Lundsfield me... Jr. can do with this team that I think they can, I think but... they can make the top six seed. Let me, let, 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 let me, let me, let me get some other voices in because me personally, if I'm the Wizards, I, I would be saying, hey, uh, Los Angeles, uh, we'll give you Chris Stops and Kyle Kuzma for those uh, two picks and, and uh, Russell Westbrook. <laughs> or, you, real, you realize those picks are like elementary school right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like this, is, like this is the problem with the Wizards. They're going to play themselves into paying people money they shouldn't pay money to. Uh, let's get uh, Micah in here real quick, and then we've got uh, Elon, 
uh, dumb and ugly who wants to come in here and praise the Wizards. Uh, I am assuming that is a parody account because I don't think Elon looks like that unless he did some drastic plastic surgery. Uh, Micah, go ahead. Hey, Chris. Um, I'm just going to... They are who we thought they were. <laughs> um, they're down bad. Uh, they're about to fall off. I I think a report came out that um, Devin Booker re, like, re-injured himself. And like, well, he aggravated his injury. Yeah, and, he's uh, he's out a month. Yeah, so I mean, well, they they're about to fall, and it is what it is. Uh, big ups to Washington, though, I guess. So, I don't know. Yeah, for uh, for those who didn't know or didn't hear, um, Devin Booker is out at least four weeks after he reaggravated his groin injury from previously. For previous uh, in the season. Also out, Alexei Pukashevsky out six to eight weeks with a broken leg, uh, to which I say, shocker, that has not happened yet. Like, dude is rail thin. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. We're going to go next to Elon. Elon, uh, the Wizards won in convincing fashion. Uh, congratulations. You get to hear the Washington Wizards being talked about because they're never on ESPN. Our uh, NBA on TNT. Uh, what she got? Uh, well, thanks for having me up. Uh, we do get national chances. It's just that we get smoked every time um, that we do. So, honestly, I thank the NBA for not showing us on a more regular basis to just expose our flaws to the nation. Uh, but, yeah, I just wanted to say the Wizards are a great team when they can play tall. Like the, the Gafford KP lineup right now is plus, I think, 88. Uh, but when you throw them in with Kuzma and you just have no paint protection or like athletes at all, um, cause I know you guys were talking about the, the blocks or the lack of blocks that Phoenix has any, any team that just lets us get into the paint, like we we're able to do the first half, you, you can't do too much with us. And that's with Brad in or out. And that's because we have the other two of our, if you want to call them big three, big three with KP and Kuz, like running through the offense through them, you know, Kuz with, you know, more slashy fast break style of play or the catch and shoots or KP just kind of like an offensive hub at times. It's not a lot of teams that are built to do that. Um, I think we're like the third tallest team in the league too. So that has a factor to do with it. Um, but yeah, just, just to come up and show these guys some love. Cause I know they don't get love enough and, probably don't deserve as much love as you think I want to give them. I uh, also just want to throw out there, there, there's no way in hell Kuzma and KP are getting traded to the Lakers for two, I don't know, 3, 000, <laughs> year 3,000 picks. I don't I don't know why that even came up in conversation. Uh, Kuz doesn't need to go anywhere. I think the the trade market or the, 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 the free agency market for him uh, is kind of going to be like Brad's was last season where – you know, all the teams with money are not as good a chances of winning in the next two to three years. And the and the Wizards can match a bag uh, as long as they caught, cut some salary elsewhere. Um, I, I do agree, though. Uh, personally, I would love if they trade off some of the younger players just to kind of restock in this draft. We really do need a, a, a better point guard that can penetrate the paint and just open up some things for uh, the rest of the team. But overall, though, like this, regardless of what we put together, it's not going to be a championship contender. But it would be nice to have like a core group that's fun to root for. And with Kuz and KP, you get that. And if Brad can kind of settle in like he's been doing this season, not doing too many wrong things, he's been very efficient as a player. Are you shaving? No, I think that's somebody's uh, baby sleeping on their chest. Yeah, that's my Uh, baby. Sorry. I'll I'll wrap it up real quick, though. No, you good. You good. Uh, Oh, yeah. So, like, yeah, Brad's been an amazingly efficient player. It's just his body might be cooked with injuries at this point, uh, as physical as his play style has become the past few years. Um, but if we can get a point guard in this next draft, trading off, like, if anybody wants Corey Kispert, please, <laughs> by all means, take this dude off my hands. Uh, Denny Rui, I would love to keep him, but if we need to move him, I mean, let's talk. Move, move them all. In there for something, but I like. I feel bad for Wizards fans because they're gonna start paying people money they don't need to pay. But here's the thing: we're the Wizards. It, the ownership stinks. The front office has stunk probably as long as I've been alive. Um, shout outs to Ernie Grunfeld and Tommy Shepard. 
they're <laughs> a team that thinks they can retain players, but all they end up doing is trading for guys on long contracts or in bad situations because they can't convince anybody to stay. Like, and we had Russ. I thought that was a guy we could have considered, uh, you know, talking to staying, but he was there for years. Like, nope, I'm out. Cool. Well, that 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 was a, that was a recruitment thing. Um, Kuz got kind of got stuck there, but Kuz is out too. I I don't know. I don't know. Again, it goes back to who's going to have money in this summer that presents a better opportunity at winning, um, as well as the bag. And I think again, the Wizards. I would happily pay Kuz an average of twenty eight million a year for the next three years. Wow. Um, just to have something to root for. Because, again, we're not building anything with Bradley Bill on his current deal. So unless we're talking about moving him and opening some stuff up there, I think the best we're going to do is just have a team that's a decent, high, you know, highest ceiling, second-round exit team to root for. And I'd be happy with that because, you know, as a Wizards fan, I'm, I'm, I'm a very much a realist. And I know what a contender looks like and I know what the best we can do is and I'm happy with the best we can do if we can do that. All right. Feel you. Now clear that nose up, man. I, I remember uh with mine, like I I I I had to bulb that nose all the freaking time. Oh no, he got he has uh he's just getting through COVID, so it's been pretty nasty lately. But, uh, yeah, we're working through it though. Hey, uh, b- prayers up man. I, I I'm glad that uh you're getting through it and hope everything stays good, Elon. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, shout out coleslaw, though. It's, it's still trash. Nah, it's not, but it's okay. You know, if you made more coleslaw, you'd have a more robust uh, immune system. Good in vitamin C, A, and K. Uh, Jay, go ahead. Is there any way I can interest Elon in a Kuzma Will Barton package for Jake LaRavia, Brandon Clark, Danny Green, Tyus Jones, and two picks? It's not a bad deal. Yes. And that's only because the Grizzlies are my backup team. Which, oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. so you have to have a backup team. I've been with the Grizzlies yes. since grit and grind, though, so I'm not like sure. a, a, a bandwagoner with Ja. I love, I love the spirit of grit and grind, which is why I'm, sure. I'm happy if the Wizards get a second round exit team. So that, uh, yeah, just swap from one team to another. Uh, I'm happy to do that because I'm still root for Coos either way. So thank you. I I I, I hope. I hope well, you do not pass on the two team thing. Like that's just like we we need to stick a line in the sand here about fandom. And and like too too often now this this blurry fandom is in existence. I cannot I cannot in good faith allow this to continue. It's um, last thing it's not blurry. I just need a team to watch in the playoffs to root for. The Wizards ain't that. So right. I had to pick somebody else. <laughs> it was the All good right. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Uh, Wizards win by 25, 127, 102. Um, I happen to think Rui's out. I happen to think uh, Denny is out. I happen to think they definitely want to move Kispert. Uh, the only players that I know that they, they really went in uh, this season long-term thinking uh, were Gafford, potentially Kuzma, Beal, and Porzingis. Everybody else I heard can can – be moved. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, look, y'all got Wizards talk. And, and what I meant on TNT and ESPN, I didn't mean by playing. I mean talking because they don't ever talk about the Wizards unless they're like making fun of an outfit that Kuzma's wearing. Like they're still talking about that pink sweater thing. And yes, I said pink sweater thing because that wasn't a sweater. It was a sweater thing. And I don't know any other way to explain it. Uh, up next, uh, we've got some Pelicans talk. Following that, uh, we will have Nets and Hawks as as Nate McMillan does the incredible, ladies and gentlemen, he explains away the loss, saying, well, we were in transition even though we had more than five seconds left, and I have two timeouts in my pocket. Uh, we'll do that after this, though. Uh, we'll do our read. As we hit the top of the second hour, I want to say thank you to everybody who's popping in here. I, I check, you know, periodically, like, the, the show card, and, and like, it just it just doesn't get enough. 116 people in right now and 23 retweets like and out of those 23 like 16 were within the first 10 minutes because uh the people who come in in the morning like they they know like what i ask if you enjoy it if you're getting value if you're being entertained um help that and that's the easiest way to do it takes two taps um and and that gives me the ability later to say to uh, let's say slamgoods.com saying hey man like look at the growing community 
Uh, we've had over 300 sales with the promo code Hoopspaces. They're here every day. They hear your voice, uh, and they know that they can go to SlamGoods.com and pick up a copy of the pickup card game and a limited edition Funko Pop, all for under $50 combined while saving 15% using promo code Hoopspaces. Like, boom. It's done. That's how it works. And it doesn't work if I don't get the likes and the retweets, right? So thank you for coming in and listening. Always appreciative. But tell other people, hey, check this place out. I enjoy it. I'm here two, three days a week. It keeps me engaged in the league and the sport that I love. Uh, And then head over to slamgoods.com and check out what they have for you, uh, the basketball fan, and use promo code Hoopspace to save 15% off your entire purchase. I'm not even worried yet about getting hoodies there, right? Like, I'm not. I'm just happy that they're sponsoring the show. So please check them out. They're dope. Uh, all right. Uh, Pels win 119 118. Uh, Zion Williamson went freight train on Rudy Gobert, uh, thus disproving Rudy Gobert's dominance as an interior defender. Uh, he is now a shell of himself. Uh, 10 points, eight boards, four blocks. But those four blocks, they were meaningless because one Zion Williamson decided that he looked like a French baguette and he was going to go dip it in uh, some good roumelade, top it with some boiled shrimp uh, and some coleslaw and go to town. Uh, 43 points, five assists to steal a block, 14 for 21 from the field, 14 for 19 from the floor. And for D'Angelo Russell, no one cares. Okay, nobody cares that you think Zion Williamson plays football. The man is 6'8 and 260. Like, what do you want him to do? You want him to lose 40 pounds? It ain't going to happen. So, like, he's only going to be able to play the way he plays, which is, I see you in front of me, move. And if you don't want to move, learn how to take a charge. Get both your feet planted outside the restricted zone and shut your mouth and brace yourself because it's going to hurt. Otherwise, as all I can care, he could get to the line 30 times a game. And if you don't believe me, you can join me on Playback TV when I watch the Pelicans game, and I'll tell you every time he could go to the line because it's sick. It's like Shaq levels absurdity. 118 uh, was what Timberwolves scored. That's a concerning factor for the Pelicans uh, as they were not able to stop, uh, you know, basically two of the the, the more craftiest guards uh, that a lot of people don't give credit for. Like D'Angelo Russell can score. The issue is sometimes he thinks he can score better than he can, and he gets into his, quote, bag, and he looks bad. But when he's locked in, he's an effective combo guard. And Anthony Edwards... You know, despite the up and down play this season, which I think is more based out of his environment and his reaction to it, is still a top young guard and going to be one of the better players in the league for a very long time. And Zion dropped 43 on him by saying, I'm going to dunk the ball. You can't stop me. And guess what? They couldn't. Uh, We'll go to Rails Pels, 6 out of 12 uh, first, uh, and then we'll bring in the other voices to talk Pels. And Timberwolves, check out Pels Rails on the Pels and Whistles podcast on the Believe Network. Also, uh, on the FanView app, uh, being able to interview the likes of Trey Murphy III. Uh, and, and if you've been here, you've heard me use this uh, now twice. Uh, once with the Suns, once with the Celtics. The next interview coming up is the Clippers. And if you want to actually have a chance, uh, hit me up and I'll, I'll tell you exactly how it works with FanView. Rails, the floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I appreciate you bringing up the fan do thing and me interviewing my good friend, Kenneth Murphy the <laughs> third. Last night he went for 21 points, man. He was five for six from three. Um, you know, he, he's been a little bit freaky lately, but last night he looked really good, man. Um, but Zion, though, 43 points. Uh, I think he only had like three rebounds, five assists, um, and just under 34 minutes. That was his first game back after having COVID. Um, and they made all these jokes about, you know, he was out due to reconditioning. And they were saying he had a big Christmas dinner and blah, 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 whatever. They can't do anything to stop the man. Uh, also, shout out to uh, L.A. Ward, Dylan, Jason. I got a couple of Pelicans fans came through today uh, to show support. But, um, yeah, man, Ant Edwards, uh, at the end of the game, Ant had a dunk. 
to like tie it up right after Zion had that like steal and dunk. And I was like, okay, well, that's less than ideal. But I mean, hey, we, we gave up 27 points to Ant, 27 points to D'Angelo with his car baby self. Uh, shout out to Austin Rivers. He had five points and six personal fouls. Uh, your favorite coach, uh, Papa Doc Glenn Rivers, was in the building to see his son fall out of the game. Uh, that was very heartwarming. Um, it was uh, the Pelicans doing some, some crazy stuff, man. They they went they won seven in a row, lost four in a row. Uh, now they've won four in a row again, and all of this has been going on without Brandon Ingram. Um, I I suspect that when Bi does end up back in the uh, rotation, um, we could end up dropping a couple of games. Um, that just happens. Uh, hopefully, you know, people don't think the sky is falling or anything like that when when that day does come. But um, I think he'll be back soon. You know, he just suffered a little setback with the toe and everything. But I think people underestimate um, how much you need a big toe when you are running and cutting and jumping and, you know, trying to run guys off the three-point line and stuff like that. So um, I think he deserves – um, it's a little bit more grace. I know it's been frustrating for us, but you, you got to think about how frustrating it's been um, for him because he wants to be out there with his guys. Um, but, yeah, man, I think that's I think that's all I got for today. Um, I can't stand Rudy Gobert. I don't think that he's uh, a threat. Even his teammate, Anthony Edwards, once said that he ain't putting fear in nobody's heart, and I wholeheartedly agree with that. All right. Uh, shout out to the Cajun Potato uh, hopping into the group chat down below. <laughs> What's up, J-Mac? Appreciate a follow whenever you have a chance. We're here every day. Seems like you should be too. Do it. Uh, Louisiana country gal. The Kings have been playing great ball. Uh, You are absolutely correct. They they have been. Um, DeMontis Sabonis came back. We'll get into that game a little bit later. Uh, Six out of 12. Uh, Did you happen to catch the wonderful six or eight from the floor? Five for six from deep. Four for five from the line performance of Mr. Trey Murphy the third. Hey, Chris, can you hear me now or no? Yeah, we can. Look at that. He's back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, give him Sorry a round of applause, that. everybody. Look, it was about to ruin my day, man. I couldn't get this off my chest. I can't even lie to you. Um, no, um, I'm, look, it's always a great day when the Pelicans win and the Lakers lose. And the only reason why we paid so much attention to the Lakers is because we own their pick. So that, so Lakers don't, don't, you know, don't think it's a fascination thing because that's not what it is. Um, but, yeah, Zion scored 33 points in the second half, and he scored the last 14 points of the game last night for the Pelicans, um, including um, a steal in the last couple of minutes with a dunk at the other end. Um, you know, like he said after the game, CJ told him, he said, do you want to be great? And Zion responded, yes. Um, and he said, this is your moment to take over the game. And that's exactly what he did. So I think – and like what Rail said, this is his first game coming back from COVID. Uh, I know it took CJ um, probably four games to come back, even though he had a longer extended time that he missed. Um, so that was very impressive. Um, another thing that I want to mention also is um, Anthony Edwards had 23 points, I think, in the first half. Um, and once they they put Dyson Daniels on Anthony Edwards, he only scored four points for the last uh, you know whole second half. So um, Dyson, uh, like I really love how Willie Green is starting to go to Dyson um, in crunch time moments like that, especially if Herb Jones is not on the court or is not available, um, because you know he understands that Dyson is probably our best defender. And and look, I love Herb. Um, but sometimes he can get very handsy and also he can get very jumpy. Um, he's been jumping at a lot of pump fakes this year, um, which is kind of uncanny like him. Uh, maybe they watched film on him last year, you know, jumping from the, you know, um, you know, from the post to blocking threes and just know that they can pump fake him. I love the way Dyson stays grounded, stays low. Um, you can even see on the last play of the game when um, Anthony Edwards was, you know, doing that fadeaway jump shot um, on the wing with two seconds left in the game. Uh, Anthony Edwards was was putting his body and his shoulder into Dyson Daniels, um, and he has a lot of size on Dyson as far as weight and strength. But Dyson just kept taking the blows, taking the blows, and and you know made him shoot from his highest point, and he couldn't make it. So. Um, I want to give, you know, Zion his flowers, man. Like, I feel like when Zion gets in that mode of just, like, 
it's me versus you and you're not going to stop me no matter what you do. Um, he's one of one. And, 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 and like, there's not one player that can guard him one-on-one. And that's the thing about this team. That's, that's, that's kind of scary. Once we get all our guys back, when you put even more shooters around Zion, um, he's very good and decisive at delivering the ball when he knows, um, you know, where the double team's coming from. You'll see in the first half of games, He's very like he kind of scopes out the area on how the defense is going to play him for the game, where the double teams are going to come from. Um, Anthony um, uh, Antonio Daniels does a good job of kind of mentioning that throughout the game. Uh, if you watch it on the Pels Network uh, on Bally, but um, it's scary when they can put it all together what they can be. Um, I sent something to you the other day uh, about this team that um, so I, I hear this right now. They've not started – so the Pelicans have not started the same five guys in more than 10 games this season. They haven't even put the same five guys on the floor together for more than 10 games. And they've won, what, 22, 23 games. No group of five players have won more than six games uh, on other teams. So it just kind of speaks to the depth of this team. Um, Jackson made a key, you know, three last night in the closing minutes. Um, so – yeah, man, it's a it's a good day to be a Pels fan. Um, in both ways, the Lakers, um, like you know, just reminiscing of what you said earlier about you know when they signed LeBron, when they traded for AD, that was kind of like our like our thing, right? It's like um, you trade it for the future. You trade it. I mean, not, like not for the future. You traded your future for the win now, the next four years, and it just hasn't happened. So, you know, hopefully they can keep losing as a Pelicans fan so we can get that top, you know, a top four, top three pick. Um, but that's all, Chris. I'm glad I was able to speak today, man. My day would have been ruined if I couldn't talk. I can't lie. Did the sound cut out? Seems like it. No one can hear anything, huh? No, dum, I don't dum, hear dum, dum. <laughs> 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 nice, nice. Sorry, got a got a phone call. Um normally normally I have it on do not disturb, but I, I am uh anxiously waiting a phone call from um a brand that rhymes with Shmamazon. So like that kind of takes a little bit of priority. If I get that phone call, y'all y'all just gonna have to wait. <laughs> For sure. We have to stay. <laughs> um appreciate six of the twelve coming in. Uh I, I and he he cut out like literally in the last two seconds because I got that phone call. Uh Rel, is there anything you want to add in here before I bring in JF, Micah, and Anas for their thoughts on the Pels or the Timberwolves? Um, no, I don't think I have too much else to say. Um we have a really big game against Memphis this weekend, um, with us being a game and a half ahead of them right now, and then we have to play the Sixers tomorrow night. Um, it's two, it's two really big games coming up for us as far as the standings go. Um, and of course, you got to plug Pels and Whistles podcast on Believe Network. And uh, yeah, that's it for me. All right, there you go. And you know, it was good to see Doc Rivers uh, down in NOLA uh, because if it wasn't for Willie Green, I would definitely say uh, NOLA could use some Doc Rivers greatness. Uh, we'll go to Micah real quick. We'll go to Anas. We'll close out Pels and Wolves um, with JF Cake. Um, take your shots if you want. I Rudy go there. I will no longer stop you. Uh, I, I have tried uh, to stop people, but if you really want to uh, let it rip, we'll go to Micah first. Micah, 30 seconds. Um, first, real quick, uh, man, the Pelicans are so fun. Like, they're so fun to watch, and seeing them come up is – it's just great to see. It's, they'll they'll give you same with the Kings as well. They don't give you those annoying vibes. They just play great ball, you know. And so, and seeing Zion going through everything that he's gone through in his career, be the impact that he is, is just so fun to watch. And uh, yeah, right. Minnesota, Minnesota, is Minnesota. Looking out for Anthony Edwards because he hates playing with Rudy and Cat, and nobody's saving them from them contracts. So there you go. 
30, 30 seconds is real fast, y'all. But good, good take, good take. We will go next to Anas. Uh, try to keep it 30 so we can keep it moving. Yeah, of got course, some other of things. course. Um, just wanted to touch on your MVP board, you know, and re- relating to Zion. I mean, at the top of the board, mostly agree with that. And Zion at five right now with the guys ahead of him makes sense. But, you know, with the trajectory of the season um, and the way things are going, I wouldn't be surprised if he goes up higher and he and he can have a legitimate, legitimate case at top three towards the end of the season. Oh, Anas, I've been saying that for a few weeks now. Like, this this Zion Williamson MVP campaign going to be nasty. And if, yeah. Nasty. If he's unstoppable. He's just straight up. Like, y'all, like I, if y'all don't understand, here's his last seven games. 31 points on 63% shooting, 50 from three, 70 from the line, six boards, six assists, a block of steel. And when I was watching last night, I loved just his ment- – like he said in his mind, I'm going to take over this game, and he did every right thing late game. And that's just – it's great seeing that from a young guy um, his age. And, you know. Right. Z- Zion and Pels Love Fest 2, Rudy Gobert punching bag zero. We'll go to JF Cake to see if this changes. JF, what you got? Yeah, Chris, I just want to say um, last time Rudy Gobert made a comment crazy like that, uh, he, made, he created a pandemic. So I think this comment he made about general managers, you might see some of them lose their jobs, including the Timberwolves general manager. Goddamn, Rudy Gobert. There we go. Two to one. Uh, we'll close this out with Jay Mack. New to the show, new follower. Uh, dope to have you, everybody. Here's the Jamaican <laughs> horns and the bomb. J Mac, your thoughts on last night's game? Close us out, sixty-seven. Um, obviously a great win. The, the Pelicans were on a tear after going on that four-game losing streak. But um, I want to take this opportunity just to kind of give some flowers to the front office to David Griffin. He's been a punching bag for a lot of the fan base. Made some mistakes early. My man has built one of the deepest teams in the league now. Um, big flowers to Willie Green for making adjustments on the fly. As many injuries as we've had, this team has been super productive. No matter who's in the lineup. And I also want to give uh, flowers to my girl, Ralph. She's keeping it real, uh, exposing the Pelicans to everybody, showing us who we are, and keeping the fan base together. It was a beautiful, beautiful scene in the blender last night. Much love. Yeah, we're we, 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 we going to have to work on that. The blender just does not work for me. I totally know why. You know, I'm down with Smoothie King. Um, if they ever want to be a paying sponsor, uh, I will drink Smoothie King every day. Uh, but like the blender, just it just it's just not cool. It makes sense, man. Like Chris, <laughs> really tell me why. How? Sense. Look, look, the the naming rights deal or whatever is up um, in 2024, and then they'll have a new, you know, whatever kind of cryptocurrency want to buy the naming rights. For <laughs> a couple years. <laughs> it, it's just because blender blender generally uh, is is a has a negative connotation. That's all. Oh, man, how do you make a smoothie, though? <laughs> Not necessarily the way you want to make this argument. Like, I I, it, <laughs> I, I don't think you want to go down here. I'm very all well right, versed right, with the English right. language. Uh, when you j- come in the Smoothie King Center, you're getting blended up. That's oh, jeez. Right. Jeez, we are now entering <laughs> S&M territory. Uh, save me, JF, please. <laughs> Yeah, Chris, that kind of scares me when fans start naming arenas because if uh, Bangro's ever bought out us out, I don't want us to be called the Titty House. Oh God! And like they put they they are they are legit putting offers out to the Miami Heat. If y'all don't know, like it's bad. Um, shout out to FTX. <laughs> not not you know, I if you lost money, I'm sorry for you. But like in in the grand scheme of things. As somebody who's lived through every major fraud of the last 40 years and remembers uh, two of the three because I was over the age of five, um, Enron, I wrote a paper on Enron. Uh, God, that was, what, when I was 14? Like, the the absolute hilarious absurdity of how Enron was allowed to even happen. And then people say it doesn't, it, it will never happen again. Ladies and gentlemen, history repeats itself constantly. Uh, whether you're talking Enron to FTX or whether you're talking um, the Los Angeles Lakers, because like they're they're at it again, they're repeating this this down cycle. All right, uh, Timberwolves and Pels. Uh, I mean, I feel bad for uh, Anthony Edwards uh, because he's hating life. 
<laughs> um, there is a trade. I put a trade out there. This is a pro trade for Miami, a little bit more pro uh, than the Timberwolves. But uh, there is a trade that I think works for both teams. Uh, it gives Max Struess and his shooting plus Haywood Highsmith, uh, a defensive player off the bench for Minnesota. It then gives uh, the Heat a backup big in Nas Reed that they can either actually start at the four or bring off the five better than Dwayne Dedman uh, and Jaden no- uh, Jalen Noel uh, as well as the guard off the bench. I know you don't like it, JF, but I'm sorry. Uh, Duncan Robinson is borderline untradeable. He and Struce do the same job. Uh, and 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 there go your problems. All right. Uh, next up, Nets and Hawks. Um, I, I I would love to say that the Nets won this game. I just really think Atlanta lost it more. Uh, shout out to Kevin Durant, number two on the uh, big board MVP list. Kyrie Irving taking over the fourth quarter, uh, twenty eight total, eight assists. Uh, Kevin Durant, twenty six, sixteen boards, eight assists, two blocks. Nicholas Claxton, six blocks. Royce O'Neal, three blocks. And, and shout out and, and, and big ups to Royce O'Neal. Uh, there is no player on the Brooklyn Nets other than maybe Patty Mills who gets it more <laughs> and doesn't deserve it. Uh, Royce does everything that every player on that team doesn't want to do, and he does it without complaining. Um, and, and literally, probably your third most important teammate. Uh, not player, that would be Claxton, but teammate. Uh, behind Kevin Durant uh, and, and Kyrie Irving. Ben Simmons, uh, 10 points, five boards, two assists, a whole lot of effort on defense, uh, not a, a lot of production. Um, but the biggest thing that I had with the Nets at the beginning of the season was usually you could say give 20 teams. I said you had to give the Nets more time. I said give them 35 games. I said give Ben Simmons 35 games. Well, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. We're 35 games in for the Nets. They are now the second seed. They're 23 and 12. Uh, ben Simmons has played 25 games. He's steadily improving. In 10 more games, I am expecting Ben to average uh, closer to the 15, 8, and 8, uh, probably round 10, uh, 8, and 7, uh, and as he works his way back uh, into shape. Um, and the Hawks just are they're, – they're, they're something – <laughs> DeJounte Murray, 24 points. John Collins, another good game without Trey Young, 21 and 8. Onyeko Kangu, 18 and 13. Uh, horrible shooting night for the rookie AJ Griffin. He's going to shake that off. He was 2 for 10 from the floor. Aaron Holiday got the start uh, as opposed to maybe starting Bogey, Jalen Johnson, or Justin Holiday. Off the bench, uh, Jalen had 14. Bog had 14. So Bogey's getting back in there. And I really like Jalen Johnson as a prospect. Um, but there's something just fundamentally wrong here with the Hawks. And it starts with the change in direction from the front office, uh, who were more about building. Uh, and then they said, hey, we're going to take a shortcut. We're going to make a major trade. We're going to bring in DeJounte Murray. Uh, and Trey's going to play off ball. This was a process that they probably should have sat down and realized it was going to take two years. Uh, but instead, they loaded it up for this year, and I think that's what got them. Uh, so we'll talk Nets and Hawks now. We'll go to Joel first uh, as he's across the pond. He's finishing up work. I want to make sure he gets his thoughts in here. If you're up on stage, uh, do me the favor. Uh, there are two Nets content creators that you should follow here. Uh, that is Saint from Nets Kingdom and Nets Kingdom AJ. They do a fantastic, phenomenal job. Uh, with the Nets Kingdom over on YouTube. Uh, and if you want to type in the name Cashpiracy and Flopaganda, he holds it down with the pregame and also Brandon from In and Out. But I can't tell if Brandon is a Nets fan or a Hornets fan. So it's, it's kind of it's kind of weird. He's like he's like Malika, but at least Malika admits that he likes the Horn- that she likes the Hornets, whereas Brandon just is a closeted Hornets fan. Um, big big thing in Nets Twitter. If you don't know, uh, Joe, go ahead, man. What's up? Yeah, so there was an interesting game, uh, um, you know, last night. Um, at the end of the day, the Nets didn't play very well, and Chuck Fon seemed to be experimenting a little bit. I did read that he um, said that uh, both him and uh, Fiery Nate uh, didn't want to use another timeout because they had already uh, at the end of the first quarter, and that's why um, the rotations got all messed up because basically – um, one coach was waiting for the other to call the timeout to be able to make changes. Neither 
one of them did. So that's why the Nets rotations at least was big, uh, was weird. I don't know about the Hawks rotations, but uh, yeah, so that it was a little bit questionable. Uh, Jacques Vaughn made a couple of decisions that I didn't really understand. At the end of the day, you uh, took uh, took it up for Patty. Yes, um, he did uh, shoot quite well from three, and he made all his free throws and whatnot. But um, I don't like that lineup, you know, when we have two or uh, three guard lineups and whatnot, and it's just on defense, uh, it's just awful. You know what I mean? So uh, overall, it's a game we could have lost, especially if uh, if Nate McMillan uh, would have, um, yeah, made a few adjustments or made a few better decisions down the stretch, um, especially, you know, not calling a timeout, even though he had two left uh, uh, at the end of the the game, that's sort of like a Steve Nash kind of thing to do. So, um, yeah, that was a, was a bit strange. And uh, I have one question. I don't know if we have uh, an Atlanta insider here, but I heard about uh, Nathan Millen that he's like really the kind of like um, coach that is quite uh, hands on in a negative way, right? Micromanager, right? Like no one is allowed to have their phone on them when they're on the bus and whatnot. Can anyone confirm if that's true? Because you know, like if if Nate is really like people say he is, then it wears out, right? It, you you put wear players down, and it might be better for Atlanta to part ways with uh, with fiery Nate. So, yeah. um, all right. So so the issue with Nate is is that it's kind of twofold. Nate is a player's coach, like he very much is similar uh, to Doc Rivers in the essence of trusting the players, like he, he wants his starters to know that they have his backing, uh, that they have the freedom to operate within the context of his offense. But like, hear how I say that, that there's a limit there, right? Like it, the, the greater you capitulate to what he wants, the better a player coach he is. The, the less you capitulate to what he wants, the worse of a coach he is for that individual player, right? It's yeah. very Rick Carlisle esque. It's very Greg Popovic esque, right? That's where there's a difference because Doc doesn't have that. Doc is on the other side. He's the player's coach that does the same thing, but he allows you to be more of yourself than almost any coach in NBA history. I think maybe Don Nelson might be the only coach uh, who who gave his players. The, the proverbial all free pass, right? And and I think what happened is that run to the Eastern Conference Finals uh, was the worst thing in two ways. One, they really weren't there yet in terms of maturity and, and, and total development. Uh, and two, oftentimes the interim coach is not the real answer, right? The interim coach is hired to kind of caretake and carry you through a difficult time. But what what the interim coach position is, is the guy who best sees what's wrong with the team and how to fix that team in that instance, in that iteration. Very rarely does that then carry over because once he's no longer or she is no longer, because you see this also in the WNBA uh, and in, in college women's and men's women's, the new coach puts in their system, which is oftentimes different from the system previously. And, and like what we see in Atlanta is the same as we saw in Indiana. It just isn't working partly because it's, it's, it's archaic. And then partly because now the players got used to them being able to play a certain way with success going to the Eastern conference finals. They tried to do the adjustment when he became the head coach last season. I screamed all last year that this, this ain't the dude you think he is. And then now at this year, people are finally realizing, holy crap, this isn't the coach. And and like to me, I, I'm 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 sitting back liking it. In terms of not allowing to have phones, um, that is that is both true and not true. Like there have been instances where he says, "Hey, we really need to focus. Let's keep the phones in in, in the locker room, so we can talk about this game because we've lost five in a row." Um, but you like. No NBA coach uh, is really going to ever get away with saying no phones. 
Yeah, that that uh, that makes more sense than uh, yeah. You, you can't get away with that in, in 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 this day and age with saying them. You can never be on your phone. Like that's just not going to work. Um, I love what you said about um, interim coach because I've been saying this about Jacques Fon. Is after winning like two games, like people were saying, give him the job already, and they should have given him the job already, and just give him the job and blah blah blah. And even though long term it seems like it was an excellent decision, I think it's still risky that you. Don't give um, an interim coach a job after he wins a couple of games. It's not a good long-term policy, right? Yeah, and yeah. That, you don't you don't give him the job beyond this year. Exactly. Like you, yeah, you can give him the job for this year, and then you come out and say, "Hey, we're not hiring anybody. This is the dude. We'll reevaluate in the beginning of the off season." Um, but the issue is, and I said this as well. There was, a, there was a time where it was harder to be a black coach in the NBA. Uh, it's still kind of hard if you actually look at the totality of, of demographics of coaching. Um, and Jacques Vaughn was done no favors because when he wanted to become a head coach, the only job that was available that would hire him was an unserious Orlando team. And yeah. so, like, his record is, like, as a head coach in Orlando, not even 60 wins and well over 150 losses. So he had just been like permanently tarred and like he wasn't going to get another shot except as an interim. Now he's got several things uh, that other interims don't tend to have. One, he was already an interim coach who took Brooklyn uh, to the playoffs Yes, back, he did. In, uh, back in 2019. And he's been in Brooklyn for like eight, nine years now. Correct. So he does have – a a interesting chance if Sean Marks and Joe Sy want to have a real conversation saying, if we want to build the culture, we have to build a culture with the person who's been here and knows what the culture needs to be. That's going to be the argument for Jock Vaughn combined with this year's success. Let me get some other hands in here. Uh, Joel, I'll get back to you in a second. Uh, we'll go next to five level killer and then we'll go to row nose. Five level sixty seconds. What do you got from last night's Nets game? Um, that 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 Kyrie is one of the best fourth quarter scorers in the NBA. Um, doesn't take much for him, and 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 as great as KD is, people don't like to say that he's a great player that defers very well. He doesn't get in people's way when they on a BS. Um, great defense in the second half. Um, into that into that. Remember we spoke about this, Chris, real quick, but the Atlanta thing. Why did you trade for a point guard when you got a point guard if you didn't think that point guard in the future was going to be your point guard? That's how I look at it. And they played better with DeJounte Murray than they do with Trey Young. So is it the coach? Because all the players feel the same way damn near as a coach. So is it really the coach or did the player, after he had one of his best seasons as an NBA player, did they progress or did they stay the same? Because if if he if he if he progressed, I think that they'll still be a playoff contending team high in the high in the rankings and not where they at. I, Dejounte Murray is a better point guard for me. He's a better team player for me, and I don't. Th I think Trey Young time in Atlanta might be up, and I think they should get rid of him before they get rid of Nate Nate McMillan because I think Nate McMillan's a great coach for for the players that they have. There's just that they just got a superstar, and the people and the players don't mess with the superstar, but. Next, I I mean, I I personally I think I think there's an issue with both, but that's just me. And 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 to that effect, I'm gonna put what I put in June, ladies and gentlemen. June, I was trying to tell you in June. What was I trying to tell you in June? Five level killer. You want to read that uh, tweet I just put up there? My fault. I gotta get to it. My fault. I gotta get to yeah, it. I gotta good. get to it. You're good. It was kind of impromptu. Like, there's no fault on you. Like, I could have gave you more time and a better lead up. Ah, uh, man, you messed me up. What did you put? I can't see it. I'm sorry. Uh, DeJounte Murray better than oh, Trey Young. Oh, yeah, DeJounte Murray, Trey Young. I didn't look at that. Just, yeah. It just loaded up on my phone. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I got and, all the time and, in the world. Look, 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 look. And I've been saying this as a point guard. As an individual player, Trey Young talent supersedes what DeJounte Murray could do as scoring and maybe playmaking. But as an all-around player, point guard, He's better than him. 
He's better. Yeah. He's going to fill up the stat sheet. He's going to get everybody involved. He's going to actually rally the team to play around him. And he did that last night. And he plays John defense. Collins would have had his best game of the season as a as a player with the Hawks this season last night with DeJounte Murray. Back to back nights too. Because mm. he had he had a twenty and ten the other night. Uh, let me get Ro in here. Ro Hawks fan de jour, uh keeping it straight with you all the time is what he says. And every time he's been up here, he's been a straight shooter. We appreciate that. Good morning, Ro. How you doing? Good morning. What's going on? What's going on? Um. Uh, a lot of people are starting to wake up and, and ask themselves this question that I've been preaching uh, since the moment the Hawks made this trade. And to be honest, before the Hawks made this trade, DeJounte Murray is better than Trey Young. I got to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to laugh at that. All right. Uh, I, I love DeJounte Murray. I'm glad we got him. I was happy when we got him. Glad he didn't go to the Knicks or anywhere else. But honestly, uh, he's just a different type of point guard. I wouldn't say he's better. He's just different. Um, he at the end of the game, I, I haven't really missed the Hawks game probably in like 13 years, man. I watch, I watch every. I've had league pass forever. I haven't really. I think I missed maybe four games in 13 years. So I watch these guys. I watch everybody else too, but I, I mostly watch my team. Um, he's just different. We do, we do play a little bit differently without Trey Young because Trey Young takes a lot of shots. But I think our record without him is is worse than with him. So it, we're not better without Trey Young. This is a team that hasn't had a star, a, a real superstar, since since the eight, since the nineties, since Neek. Honestly, if you want to if you want to say that, I'm not going to put Joe Johnson up there, but he was he was an all star. He wasn't a superstar, but it, I mean, I, you you right though, because like that's that's I think people perennially underrate Joe Johnson. No, he he's underrated. He, he he's definitely underrated, but he's not a superstar. Trey Young is a superstar. This is a team that. That picked Marvin Williams over CP3. Like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not. We've had it. We've had it rough, man. So to just to, for anybody saying, oh, just just give him up. This the guy that was just up here. I mean, they got Katie and Kyrie, and we and we took them to the wire. I mean, I can't be mad at the game. We we just play differently because nobody knows where the shots are going to really come from if Trey Young's not there. This happens a lot, actually. If you watch the Hawks without Trey Young, it's just other guys get off. But now that Trey Young is more, he's more accurate now. He's better now than he was early in the season. I think we'll be better. We we also haven't had our uh, our entire team. We've only played one game with the whole team. Someone's always been hurt. We had three starters out last night, and we took the Nets, KD, and Kyrie down to the wire, and we're beating them most of the game. So I can't be mad at the game, but I got to harp on Nate because I was talking about Nate yesterday. And I don't know if you watched the whole game or whatever, but we had two timeouts at the end of the game. <laughs> yes, you did. Didn't didn't take one timeout, and he said he wanted to to, to add an element of surprise or whatever. And uh, didn't want them to put that defensive set in or whatever. That's stupid. Like, I could see if we, you know, we was like seven, eight seconds left. You call a timeout there. Like, you, you, you can do that with Trey Young because Trey Young can shoot the ball from, from, from half court. And he's, and he's speedy enough to get down. He can, you know, we've seen him get down by himself and make a layup or, or shoot the three. We've seen that a bunch of times. Also, you got A.J. Griffin, our rookie, who leads the league in buzzer beater uh, ending with buzzer beaters. He leads the league in that. He's a rookie. So why wouldn't you drop a play for him? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. Nate got to go, man. Nate, I'm not giving up Trey Young before before Nate, before an interim coach. That's just stupid. No, I feel that's, you. Because I'm, really I'm, I'm with you on that part. I don't I, – I, I move off of Nate before I move off of Trey. Yeah, I, I don't know what – yeah, I don't know what that is with people saying, you know, get Trey Young off the team. We're not doing that. Sorry. Uh, the, the saddest part is, is, is had they called a timeout, uh, there was actually a, a specific sequence play that they could have ran that worked three times that game. Uh, John Collins, yeah, I was just was, was the was John was Collins the uh, yeah it was the was the winner because it ended up with John Collins uh, singled out on Royce O'Neal and John Collins beat him all three times that happened. Right, he was so, in the whole game. So I don't, I don't. It's just, it's just Nate. It's just the, the sets that Nate runs the system. It's just not – I don't know if it's a system set that that has to have everyone involved. Like maybe he has to have all the players. Because when, when we had uh, that one game with all the players, we won that game. We were good. We were great. But we just been having a lot of injuries, man. And, I mean, I know injuries are part of the game. That's not really an excuse. You got to play with who's out there. But it's just – Nate is just not an imaginative coach, man. He doesn't make adjustments. He gets out coached all the time. All the time. So I, I, I can't agree with – letting anybody go, not even John Collins before Nate McMillan. All right. There you go. I, I kind of agree. Um, but it, it, it is, I don't think it's 
like it is a system. Um, and it, and the reason why it worked in Indiana was that Paul George was that good, and the system works better when it's the two or the three uh, who who is the the main beneficiary as opposed to the point guard, and which is really odd because Nate played point, but he does not run a point guard offense. He runs a wing offense who can happen to facilitate and distribute. Right. All right. Appreciate it. Jay, hop in here. Let's get your thoughts on here. We'll go around the board real quick, uh, and then we'll do a quick uh, read, reset, and we'll jump back to the opening game of the night, uh, the Detroit and Orlando game. I, I, I avoided it on the opening. I tried to get the early games first, but – like to be honest, um, at thirteen and twenty three and nine and twenty five, I don't think any of you watch these games. <laughs> I don't like unless you were like me on the Bowl Bowl Express. Which, by the way, if you saw that dunk, um, you, you are on the Bowl Bowl Express. Jada Wakanda, your thoughts last night, Nets and Hawks. Uh, I guess I'm I'm in the minority. I I get why Nate didn't call timeout. Um, Dejounte Murray. Is listed at six five. Bogdanovich is listed at six five. John Collins is listed at six nine. Um, ben Simmons is listed at six ten. Kevin Durant seven foot. I don't care what anybody says. And Nick Claxton um, is six eleven. He might even be a legit six, seven foot as well. And so I I get why Nate thought they could get something better in transition meant to let the Nets set up a defense with Kevin Durant, with Royce O'Neal, with Nick Claxton, and Ben Simmons. Um, I get that thought process. It didn't work. Um, and, And I think that that has a lot to do with it. But I totally get why he would rather take his chances with the unsettled Nets defense um, than letting Jacques Vaughn draw up a defensive scheme to to uh, stymie the Hawks. Because the, my question is, if he calls timeout, who's inbounding the ball over KD? Who's inbounding the ball over Ben Simmons? Um, because he doesn't have to have – because Claxton's going to be protecting the rim on a, on a lob. So that's my question for everybody who feels like Nate screwed up. Because I feel like this is a 50-50 thing is who do you have in, inbound the ball um, in, in this timeout scenario? I'm with you on that one, my brother. It's a bang, bang play. You rather – if you take a timeout and the Nets have been playing great defense like in the second half, like you have not been scoring on them like that in the second half. You may have went on a rally, so I understand that standpoint when you're like, you know what, I'd rather take my chances with going – because we're down by one. Like that's the thing. DeJounte Murray didn't even have to shoot the three. But at the end of the day, that I understand why you didn't call a timeout. You don't want them to set up, and you give your team a better chance in this mind. That's 50-50. I, I mean, I understand the 50-50. The issue that I have is the amount of time that was remaining. Like, they're, 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 you weren't going to get a favorable matchup either way. Uh, and in regards to who's inbounding, in, inbounding the ball, uh, at that point, you actually probably bring in Frank Kaminsky to inbound the ball, and he actually ends up being a trailer for a three. And then what ends up happening is you run a screen action for DeJounte Murray. Uh, A.J. Griffin can then hedge and do a fake screen for Collins. Collins pops out in the corner, ends up going one-on-one Royce O'Neal. A.J. drives in. DeJounte is able to hit that, that, or drive because Onyeka is providing a back screen. Uh, so if the drive doesn't work out, he's got Frank Comiskey trailing for three on Yekka over here at the high post. John Collins in the corner. A.J. Griffin driving to the ball. And I don't coach. Here's the issue with that and whole the scenario, win. Chris. Guess what? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. My issue with that whole scenario uh, is Frank Comiskey, you would be bringing him in cold. He played zero minutes. He's passing the ball and taking three stops. Chris, you only got five seconds left, dog. You ain't got that He's passing the ball, taking three steps to the line, shooting a three. Seven you, seconds. Game it was seven cold. seconds off the bench. Well, yeah, but by the time, but you're only got you're you're going to play. You're not in that instance. You're not playing to hold the ball. You're playing to score after the inbound. 
Because if you hold the ball, you're not going to be able to get the favorable matchup because the six foot giants of of Brooklyn are there. Like that was the that's the coaching coaching issue. Is he did if he does this, he's playing to win the game out the timeout. His traditional thinking is I'm going to call timeout, and then that requires me to run this, this, and this. Like instead of doing what Golden State does and says we're going to hit you now. And if we lose by you hitting a game winner, so be it. Like, that's my issue. That's what I didn't see. Uh, we'll go to Free Thug next, and we got Mikey getting ready to come up. Appreciate it, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning. Yeah, what's up, Free Ah, uh, A lot. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, Nate is just not it, man. There were seven seconds, set, uh, seven seconds left when the rebound was caught. And my problem with the whole not calling the timeout thing, we didn't have a play designed or we didn't execute whatever it was that he wanted to do. So a timeout should have been called. Um, there were like three people in the backcourt at the time of the rebound. So, and all the Nets team was on the other side of the So Obviously, a timeout and get a, a set play. Because if that play didn't work, you still had another timeout where you can redraw like a whole nother. It's just... It blows my mind. Um, that's pretty much it. Oh, and for the people who keep saying you included Chris, DeJounte Murray, better point guard than Trey Young. DeJounte Murray also missed a very important free throw in the clutch. Oh, yeah. I've got no problem admitting that, but this is how I break it down. Um, both volume assist, right? Yeah. Who's better, who's better and more efficient in transition? DeJounte. Who's better at rebounding? DeJounte. Who's better at point attack defense? DeJounte. Who's better at switching? DeJounte. Who fights over screens better? DeJounte. Who boxes his I man out? I say the fighting over screens thing. They who, both can, oh. who can lead a championship offense? Not DeJounte. Neither, apparently. No, tra- we've Trey had the number two offense in the league for two years straight. Mm. What, 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 Do what, you what, see what, a championship what, ring? Doing? What, what, what are we doing here? Do you see a championship ring? Because like no, even offense. if you, I just said offense though. Even if, but even if y'all had gone to the, but just because you have a potent offense doesn't mean you win. It means you have a potent oh. offense. Well, I know, but uh, that number having a number two offense in the league, it can be a championship level offense. Doesn't necessarily create the defense, but having a number two offense in the league is a good recipe to building a championship team. All right. I I also happen to think having the number two defense in the league builds a good chance oh, that, of. Yeah. But Dejounte yeah. isn't going to turn you into the number two defense. Well, no, but I don't think I don't think people are giving the system enough credit uh, as well as giving Trey credit. It's kind of like the same issue when Steph started having success. People are like, "Is it the system or is it Steph?" The honest answer is both. Okay, I see what you're saying there, right? Yeah. So, that, so that's like, that's my that's my argument. So when you're when you're judging the player based on what it takes to play basketball. Who checks more boxes? DeJounte checks more boxes. Yeah, I just the only thing is, is when you see these games, and then then I'll speak on like the, the whole time out of my opinion on that. When when you speak, when when you see these games, there's the the reads that Trey is able to make are are light years beyond what DeJounte sees on the floor. DeJounte hundred oh, percent. It's I know the stats say that they're you know, it's like point seven, right? Point seven off. But it it is such a difference when DeJounte leads the offense and is the only one on the court versus when Trey is the only one on the point guard on the floor. Oh, I, I, I will not deny that. I've never denied that. And, and to me, the only overriding factor of that is Trey's ability to shoot the three. Which, by the way, is down this year. Well, it's down this year, but I think he's figured it out. Last five games, over 38%. Yeah, which is which is what I said. Like as soon as he hits thirty seven, yep. the the Hawks become dangerous. But exactly. they only be they only become oh, dangerous with the puncher's chance on offense. Yeah, because the only thing the that's the only thing we've struggled with this year. If we're a top, <laughs> no, it, it, no, because once we had one before we had uh, we've never played with at least two starters for uh, at least two starters out for three weeks, except for one game when we had them for one half. Oh no! I, I, I. When I say eh, I mean I'm saying Aaron Holiday, Justin Holiday, Jalen Johnson, 
Trent Forrest ain't going to get you anywhere. Yeah, but the thing is, we had a top 10 defense for the first three and a half weeks of the season. That's, uh, it, again, it, that – Defensive rating. Yeah, but the, again, qualitatively speaking, how how is that – how much of that is actual defense versus new players playing in new teams and new situations is also not healthy? I mean, I mean, I guess, I guess that could, but the defense, but the, I'm just making the point that the defense wasn't the issue. It was the offense with the shooting from Trey, with the shooting from JC, and the shooting from Jalen Johnson early when he was getting bigger minutes. Right. Yeah, no, I can, I can agree to that. Uh, but go ahead, uh, tell us uh, the other uh, take you want, uh, Mikey, because you, you come up here, you, you're a straight shooter. Um, I know you're gonna fight back on this Trey versus Dejounte thing. And for all you down there who think this is clicks, this ain't clicks. You can talk. Uh, to Nat, uh, you can talk to anybody who's known me. I've been saying that DeJounte Murray has been underrated by the NBA for the last three years. I mean, with the whole the whole timeout issue is I, I'm actually in favor of not calling a timeout in many of those situations when there's about like six. I, I prefer there to be like more than four or five seconds so you can actually get past half court and so the point guard can see the ball or see the, see the court. But there was about like six sec- six and a half seconds – and you've got, and you've got everybody down the floor, right? The the nets the nets have already gotten down the floor, so you can't look to get them in transition. And that was one of the things, the issues that I had with Nate McMillan in the press conference because he said, everybody, you want to get you want to get them when the defense isn't set, right? But their defense their defense wasn't say set, but they had five guys back back already. Also, as a point guard, Dejounte Murray. When he sees the whole floor going going 70, 80 feet like he did, when he sees that and no no good shot is developing, you can also call a timeout and and say, okay, um, no, we we don't have anything here. You got to read the you got to read the floor, read where everybody is. You had time to pass it. You didn't have the time to pass it to AJ in the far corner or Bogey in the near wing uh, for an open three because once the pass was there, it, the sh- the clock would have expired anyways. So in that case. I do like a timeout. There's, there's definitely times, and I think most times, when you have a star player on the floor, you should let it let let them play. But that specific moment, when when you had a timeout in your back pocket, if one, if your first play didn't work, we've already had three game winners um, this this year drawn up when Jalen Johnson inbounded the ball to AJ Griffin. Um, as we've had a good track record with that, so. Uh, in that situation, I would have definitely called a timeout. But most of the time, I I do agree that um, with the let it place uh, situation. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I I I think I think the Hawks are going to end up being okay. I think what what ends up downing them is they just they just don't have enough players. They go from uh like and this is a a, a <laughs> this is a a path that New Orleans fans need to be careful because they're they're kind of heading down this, this similar path. You go from having one of the deepest teams based on projections, not based on what you actually have, right? And the Hawks had success, and they had a lot of young players that were tantalizing prospects uh, that had some marginal attribution to that success, and they are then projected to continue to grow into this deep team. And then Travis Schlenk decided to throw it all away because yep. he thought he was one player away, and uh, well, which is just not really true in most cases in the NBA. Kevin Herter, and most people look at the Kevin Herter trade, and obviously that hurt us with depth. But that was that was mostly an ownership uh, type type of trade to keep us under the luxury tax. Yeah, which which has hurt us so much in our depth, and that's why that's why I keep saying this. We were seven games above five hundred early in the year. We were twelve and five. I'm pretty sure I, I could be wrong on that by a couple of games. So I'm pretty sure we were twelve and five. And we had a top ten defense in the league. Our offense was struggling, which we, which I knew we'd regress in offense. Um, I said that in spaces earlier in the se- uh, or before the season started, but it, I didn't think we'd have a bottom ten. We were we were like twenty two, twenty three, and last in the fourth. So I didn't think it'd be this bad, but I think that that could have been figured out. And once we get all our guys back, if we continue to play that defense, and with Trey shooting now, JC has shot the ball three games in a row now. Well. So he may have found something. So yeah, why- he found he found more touches away from Trey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if Trey Young played last game too, don't do that, man. Hey, I'm just I'm just having fun. This is the most Trey's been injured in his career too this year so far. 
Which, which, by the way, is also another concern. Yeah. All right. Like, it, John's going to go through this, too. Is he going to go? Th- he's actually probably going to go through it worse. Uh, let's get Jada Wakandan, a uh, valid valedictorian. I swear he does these names on purpose. Uh, we'll get his thoughts in here. We'll close out uh, with a read uh, and a reset. We've got four more games to go, plus games tonight. Jay, go ahead. Yeah, no, I I, I have watched some Hawks games. Um, I get the Nate McMillan slander, um, but I'm not a fan of blaming a coach for a one-point loss when the team missed seven free throws. I'm not a fan of blaming a coach when the when the team he's coaching is the third best team in the league at taking care of the ball, when they are the tenth best rebounding team in the league, um, the issue I would argue isn't Nate but the roster because they can't keep opponents off the glass. Um, they the the Nets literally had zero steals in the box score last night. Um, so yeah, is Nate perfect? No, is Nate going to lead this team to a chip based on his, you know, tactical brilliance? Absolutely not. Um, but a lot of the struggles I don't think are on Nate. I think it's on Trey not shooting well. I think it's on them folding DeJounte Murray into an offense where Trey was used to having the ball in his hands a lot, and now he has the ball in his hands half the time, and then you couple in Trey being in and out because of injuries, um, even though he's played 31 of the, what, 35 games. So there's a lot going on in Atlanta that's out of Nate McMillan's hands, and I think that Nate is getting an undue amount of um, slander. I mean, the Hawks defend the three-point line well. They close out well. So there, there are things that the Hawks do well that's a recipe for success. It's just they suck at shooting threes. And they suck at getting to the line, even though when they get to the line, they hit them. So uncharacter- uncharacteristically bad night at the free throw line doomed them to a one-point loss. That's not on Nate. I get the hey. game management and all that stuff, but, you know, if a Congo hits two more free throws, it's a one-point win. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I, I just – I get it. And they're not that good that on the road game. either. Yeah, they're not that good on the road either. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's things that Nate can improve on, like just about any coach in the league, not named Greg Popovich. Um, but a lot of the woes of Atlanta – I wouldn't put on Nate. I would if I had to make a pie chart. I would at at most thirty percent of this is on Nate. Everything else is is something else out of his purview, out of his control. All right. Um, I'm getting. Uh, I'm going to get a uh, Jason Tatum take on the big board uh, for for somebody who who can't really talk at the moment. Uh, when when she's ready to get it up, I'll read it out here for her. Uh, and that's our girl, Nat. Uh, make sure you shoot her a follow. Because so you think your GM is getting ready to launch soon as we get closer and closer to the trade deadline. Uh, we are entering, entering trade season. Uh, so make sure you shoot her a follow Saturdays uh, or Sundays on the weekend. We, we I don't know the time. She's going to set it. And you're going to be there uh, because all of you are doing these trade machine trades wrong. And you need to be better. And how do you learn to be better? Well, you go to somebody who actually does it. Uh, that's Nat the GM. Check it out. So you think you're a GM here on Who Spaces uh, Spaces Network. All right, Micah, real quick, 10 seconds. I like the construction sounds kill me because of the, the noise. What you got? Um, just real quick on the complaints about Royce O'Neal is just wild because they got him for a late first round pick. And in my opinion, him and DFS are pretty much the same player. And we got offered a lottery pick for him. So that's all I was going to say. All right. Appreciate it. Uh, now's the great time, ladies and gentlemen, to head over to slamgoods.com. Uh, that's right. Head over to slamgoods.com. Uh, they've got tons of things you can choose from, whether it's a cover, uh, whether it's a digital subscription, a hard copy subscription, or to pick up card game. Uh, you can choose something to help express your fandom. Uh, you can even pick up some apparel. They got some dope hoodies. Uh, shirts and hats all on sale and even on sale 
You can use promo code Hoopspaces and save 15%. TJ Kiesel, she would approve of that because you're buying something on sale, which means at a lower price, plus you get a discount, which means you save even more. So let's be smart like TJ is and all things being an adult and, and pick up something over there at, at slamgoods.com. And like, for instance, they have a hoodie and a jacket. Like the jacket is 300 bucks and it's on sale for like 60% off. You can save an additional 15%, which would still be enough to pick up a copy of the pickup card game essentially for free over at slamgoods.com using promo code hoopspaces. Save 15% off of your entire purchase. Uh, and if, if it does move you and behoove you, Head over to the Hoop Spaces merch store and buy a hoodie or a shirt. All proceeds going to making content. Uh, I'm going to wait for Nat to be able to reply uh, on the tweet with her Jason Tatum rebuttal uh, from the big board. But up next, we're going to talk Magic Pistons real quick um, because, like, really, it was the Magic and Pistons combined record 22 and 51. Uh, 121, 101 was your final. There was a fight uh, in here, and it wouldn't, really wasn't a fight. It was a sucker punch to the back of the head of Mo Wagner uh, by Killian Hayes. Three players ejected. Uh, Wagner is now entering the uh, concussion protocol. Uh, Bol Bol was 5 for 9. Franz was 7 for 15. Paulo Bancaro, uh, he had 15 on 4 for 12. Uh, Paulo uh, running away uh, with the Rookie of the Year early, which we'll talk about tomorrow. Uh, we have Wendell Carter Jr. coming back off an of injury and a restriction, uh, 16 and 8 off the bench. Uh, Jaden Ivey, Sadiq Bey, uh, yeah, they they uh, they were out there. Jaden Ivey had like one dunk, one for seven, uh, but he got to the line a lot. Uh, Sadiq Bey, 28 points off the bench. Alec Burks, damn near perfect. He was uh, 10 for 10, 6 for 6, 6 for 6, until for whatever reason he decided to take a three that wasn't needed. Would have been perfect for him. Uh, there you go. That's what the Pistons and the Magic and uh, uh, everybody that I named off of the Pistons likely to be traded, other than Jaden Ivey. Sadiq Bey, probably gone. Corey Joseph, probably gone. Alec Burks, probably gone. Hammer to do the Alu, probably gone. Um, why? Because they're all tradable contracts and a uh, team needs help. All right, we'll go to Jay. Jay, what do you got? Uh, I also, too, want to shout out Nat, Nat for being a Raptors fan. It's weird that she has an Albie Iso take. Um, Ooh, that's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Let me give you a point. That's nasty. But uh, shout out to Jalen Duran, uh, being uh, young Andre Drummond. Um, he got Se- seven re- points, eighteen boards last night, bro. But to get eighteen boards against the trees of the Orlando Magic, impressive, especially for a nineteen-year-old. If y'all haven't seen Jalen Duran, the dude jumps and his head is well above the rim. Yes. Yes. He's, I, he's like 6'11". Yes. I I enjoy me some Jalen Duran. Uh, he's a product of Coach Penny's uh, Memphis Tigers. Shout out to him. Um, uh, but nah, man. Uh, Could have been a Nick. I, <laughs> I wasn't gonna. I wasn't. Could have been a Hornet. Could have been a Hornet too. The Hornets literally have five big men on that roster. Ain't none of them as good as Jalen Duran. And they and they play plumbly like thirty six minutes on a really, really <laughs> bad team. <laughs> I don't understand. I don't get it either. Like Jalen Duran would have been perfect for Lonzo Ball. Hey, you don't need to shoot. Cool. I like to shoot. Let's play together. Yep. That, that would have been ideal. Instead, they got Mark Edwards, and they have given Mark Edwards the same amount of time as Johnny Davis. Oh, um, it makes me sad. I couldn't it even get my uh, I couldn't even uh, get my my Johnny Davis take out here because it's just it's unwarranted at this point. It is. Like, it is. You're just picking on a teenager at this point. It's, yeah, it's, I feel so bad for him. Um, crazy. Next game up: Bulls Bucks, one nineteen, one thirteen overtime. Uh, the same can be said about Giannis that can be said about Zion. The dude gets fouled every time he has the ball. Whether you like it or not, like, it's just the truth. Um, they could call 20 fouls against the team that's playing Giannis. He's just that big, that physical, that athletic, that it's hard to contain a six foot 11 250-pound dude who can grab 22 boards, dish out seven assists, and get to the rim at will. 
Uh, he took 17 free throws last night, made 11 of them, 45 points. Uh, you already heard the 22 boards. Uh, absolutely zero help by anybody on his team not named Bobby Portis. Uh, 20 and 11 off the bench for Bobby, but everybody else had a ho-hum game. Uh, Brooke Lopez, 14 points, four boards, but he didn't stretch the floor. Grayson Allen, uh, he scored 13 points. How? I don't know, but he did. And that was it. Uh, Chicago, buoyed by DeMar DeRozan, 14, uh, 42 points, 10 boards, 5 assists. Nikola Vucevic, 15, 14, and 5. Uh, Zach Levine, 24 points. Uh, Goran Dragic, the ageless one, to, off the bench with 12. Uh, Andre Drummond off the bench, back and healthy, 7 points, 12 rebounds. And still, nobody believes in the Chicago Bulls. Anybody? Yeah, no, I don't believe in the Bulls. I have a question for one Mike Budenholzer. I get that he's trying to fold Joe Ingles back into the rotation. But Jordan Wara, at this point, is, I want to say, 23 to 25 years old. Joe Ingles is 35 years old. <laughs> Um, why didn't Jordan Wara play one minute in this game? Because I I believe that in the long run he can be a better piece than Grayson Allen. Um, and then the question I have for the Bucks front office is, why did you trade Dante Divincenzo for a for Serge Ibaka? Cap. I, I at, at, the, at the time, they thought they were going to have to pay Dante 15 to 18 mil. They needed, they needed a backup big, and they needed to not pay him 15 to 18 mil. And then, and then you know, then he got hurt. And so Golden State, you know, because he got traded, then he got hurt, and he didn't want to play in sack, so then he, he signed four and a half mil in Golden State. Like, this offseason, he's likely to get uh, three years, 40 mil. Yeah. And they just they couldn't yeah. afford it. Yeah. Whoa. That's, my phone. That's another phone. That's my work phone. Whoa. Yeah. Why do you have a Mariah Carey uh song as your, your, your ringtone, That's bro? That's not the Mariah Carey song. That's, the I, that's, that's what I heard. Default. That's literally Seth, let me shut the fuck. Let me shut it up. Yeah, be quiet, Anthony. You don't you don't want to put yourself out there for ridicule. Anybody else here any any anybody else here, Mariah? I heard Mariah. No, that that was literally the Apple default. Um, right. I have Apple. I, I ain't, ain't the default Apple I heard. Do you, you, you have the Apple, Apple 9? Do no. you have the Apple 9? Because that's what my work phone is. It's the okay. Apple 9. All right. All right. That's that guy. <laughs> sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that's what it is. It's okay, man. You're still in the Christmas spirit. It's all good. Um, um, but that's why. Because uh, they, they chose between him and Pat Connaughton. And, and Pat Connaughton had that one extra year. Uh, they kept him for that one extra year, signed him for a deal that was cheaper than Dante DiVincenzo. Yeah, no, nah, I ain't gonna lie to you. I think they messed up. Um, and because when I saw this game and I looked at the Bucks roster, I was like, well, the Bucks could just kind of swallow the Bulls with their size. And Mike decided because. He mentored Taylor Jenkins. I think I got PTSD. He decided to <laughs> he decided to put a real small lineup out there and just try to out jump shoot the Bulls instead of trying to bully the Bulls. And and I just I just got questions for Mike. I just got questions on why he looks at twenty five year old Jordan Wara and he looks at thirty five year old Joe Ingles and he chooses Joe Ingles. Um, well, it's probably because Jordan's shooting is, has fallen off every year. He had a better rookie year than a sophomore year shooting, and, and he isn't shooting better this year either. Really comes down to that. Like, he just ain't shooting. He's a tweener, too. Like, that was the other thing. People are like, oh, he's a three. Like, nah, man, he was a four in college. Like, they they were trying to stretch him into being a three, four, uh, so that, you know, they could have this amorphous lineup of, of like, six, nine. Um, you know, Vision Six Nine shout out Toronto, um, and he just he just uh, hasn't he hasn't responded. The, my biggest question is is um, why Sandro not getting any run? 
I want to see some Sandro run. Like, if you ain't going to play Nuora, play some Sandro. And I'm not even going to try with the last name. Uh, it's uh, Mamikala Shvelli. Golly, say that. That works for me. That works yeah, for me. Say, say it, that it, three it, times fast. And it's Jordan War. You don't pronounce the name. It's Jordan War? All right. Yeah, I've always yeah, pronounced yeah. the end. That's just because of me. Yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, um, yeah no, like, I, I, just, I just look at this roster and I just have so many questions. Like, I understand playing Wesley Matthews. I'm not sure. What no, I don't. Use. I don't. Wait, wait, wait. I do not. I, do, I do not. I don't understand why he gets 30 minutes. I, like, I don't. Chop that, if we chop that in the 15, and we get 15 to Jordan Wara, I think the Bucks are a better team. I don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I think I think they're stuck. Like George Hill is getting 28 minutes in the year of our Lord 2022. Um. All right, I think I, I'm being honest. Like I, I put a tweet out. Y'all laughed at me. I asked, like, is is Milwaukee's championship window closed? And people are like, Oh, they got Giannis. It never closes. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, it looks closed. Unless they make a move, or until Giannis hits more than a Shaq esque 65 percent of his free throws. If Shaq, if Giannis can get back to shooting 75 percent of his free throws. And I would say forty four percent for mid range instead of forty one and a half. Well, I, I I think at this point the question is Chris Middleton's health and Drew Holiday's uh, offensive effectiveness, and I think both are questionable. Which is why I lean back again. Like, uh, is the window closed? Because like to make a move, they have to move off of Brook Lopez, Bobby Porter's. Uh, or Grayson Allen, and, and all three play a specific role that is needed, uh, and nobody's trying to pick up Grayson Allen. So that means you're you're moving either Lopez or Portis, and you can't afford to lose either of them. So you're stuck. Yeah. And what's crazy is they're stuck, and they're the two seed in the East. Oh, they're three now. Oh, three now. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, trending yes. trending down. By the way, losers of the last four, four in the last uh, four and six in the last ten. Like, ask yourself this. Who do you trust more, Milwaukee or Cleveland? And you know what your answer is? Brooklyn. There you go. Uh, Jazz and Warriors, 112-107, in a game that I watched and I just shook my head uh, because the West needs to wake up and understand that this is the time that you push the Warriors down. Like, Every team should be getting up to beat the dubs by 30. And yet somehow, some way they've crawled back to 500 without Steph, without clay. Like I don't understand. Yeah. Without Wiggins, I don't understand why the West is not kicking them while they're down. Like, that's what you're supposed to do. Oh, you won so many championships since I've been playing. I've been in the league eight years. Now I can beat you. Here's my foot in your face. But instead, Jordan Clarkson uh, was Jordan Clarkson. Mike Conley was Mike Conley, and they let the Warriors hang around, and they came back in the fourth quarter with great defense. Um, 26 points by Jordan Poole, 10 for 12 from the line, and he had a crap night shooting the three. It was two for 10. Uh, previously talked about Dante DiFincenzo looking more and more healthy, uh, which is what this Warriors team needs off the bench is that combo guard who can do a little bit of everything. 19 points, 5 for 9 from deep, good defense. Uh, Kevon Looney, 6 and 12 with 5 assists. Draymond Green, 6, 9, and 5. Uh, number 40 got the start, and he shouldn't. Patrick Baldwin Jr. is already better than him. Jonathan Kaminga is already better than him. Moses Moody is already better than him. Hell, I'll take 30 minutes of Ty Jerome, who was better than him last night. Shout out James Wiseman. Seven minutes, four points, four rebounds. Like, yeah. it's the system, guys. It's not James Wiseman. It's the system. Oh, it's Number two overall pick. Number two overall pick. It's the system. It's, the it's system. not James Wiseman. Which is also my argument for another number no. two pick named Jabari no. Smith Jr. Stop it. But you. I digress. Stop it. Stop it, you. Wait a minute. But no, my, oh, no. my issue with the Jazz, my issue with the Jazz is Lori Marketing could not be stopped. Lori Marketing is Larry Bird. This is <laughs> unreal. 
he only he probably took, could be like, bro. Let me show you. He only took twenty two shots. Oh my! Why, <laughs> why did the coach not pull Mike Conley to the side and say, "Hey, fella, don't shoot <laughs> in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Give it to Lord. Hey, Malik Beasley, don't shoot in the fourth quarter. Give it to Lori. Hey, Jordan Clarkson, don't shoot. Give it to Lori Marketing." Because on a night where Lori Marketing goes 10 for 22, 7 of 13 for 3, and oddly enough, he only takes three free throws. Outside of Mike Conley, nobody in the starting lineup has over two assists. And they all, except for Kelly Olenek, I mean, well, Jared Vanderbilt, they played 30 minutes. They played 30 plus minutes. How do you play with a man that's 10 of 22, 7 of 13 for 3, and you only end the game with two assists or one assist. Like, that's, that's what are we doing? Like, I don't, I, I, I have Colin no idea. Sexton had four. The black hole, ball hoggish, gunner, Colin Sexton had four assists. Which, by the way, he had that in 16 minutes, and, and I do not understand why he's not getting. 25 minutes per game. Nikhil Alexander Walker had three and 10. I don't understand why he's not getting 15 minutes a game. Um, but what when is you, happening? well, they, they're trying to play Rudy Gay so that Rudy Gay can get some value. They're playing Mike Conley so Mike Conley can get some value. Look, this is Danny Ainge's play. Hey, Mike Conley's 22 million. We're going to take your bad contract, give you 22 million expiring. You give us a first. Hey, you need a wing? We got Malik Beasley. Yeah, go ahead and give us Duncan Robinson. Just give us the first. Oh, hey, you need a shooting guard? How about you take either Jordan Clarkson or Colin Sexton? We'll go ahead and take, um, let's see, let's go to Brooklyn. We'll go ahead and take the injured Seth Curry in the future first. For, you know, a, a guard, uh, wing forward like Nikhil Alexander-Walker, who's going to be the piece you need, who can play the two or the three next to either KD or Kyrie or Ben Simmons. Like, that's what they're doing. That's the entire move here. Uh, what's, what's messing it up is Lori Markkinen. Like, giving you 30 and 16, essentially, saying, eat this. Ain't none of you can stick me because nobody on the Warriors can stick that dude last night. Uh, and to talk about it, we're going to talk to Tiberius. Tiberius, TJ, what's up? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. Uh, shout out to Jay. Uh, <laughs> I'm never going to let this down. Um, the whole um, the whole Lori marketing thing, I was screaming at the TV. I don't even know why I did that. But it seemed like they would, the Warriors would not, get up on him to, uh, to to play defense. They were going under screens, um, and that is why he got off. Um, but I, I was very impressed with uh, the young dubs, how they, they uh, kind of rallied around and came back in the fourth. Uh, like, Draymond Green is that dude. I don't understand why we consistently try to make sure that we downplay his name. Uh, he, he had a couple of key blocks. Um, I, I don't know uh, – I have a love hate relationship with Ty Jerome one day. I don't like the way he performs the next day. I'm like, man, this dude is a solid contributor to the team. Um, you know, Kaminga has some good minutes. I just thought that the game was pretty much uh, the jazz is until like midway through the fourth. And we, we put some, some solid defensive stops together. Jordan Poole is that dude. He is him. Uh, I mean, you said it before, Chris, I, I, I also kind of mentioned it. Uh, we need to put him in the starting lineup. Uh, I mean, we didn't have Clay, of course. We didn't have Steph, and we didn't have Williams, and we still uh, pulled out the W, and that's three in a row. Uh, so we have a winning streak. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow we got Portland. We'll see if we can win that game. But I mean, it 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 was a a game that the Jazz should have won, and I'm glad that they didn't. Um, and that's all I got, really. All right, appreciate it, TJ. I was going to go to Royce next, but he popped back down. Uh, so I'm going to use this time, ladies and gentlemen, to give a read here, not for me, not for the sponsor, not for the show, but for Malika Walker, uh, host of the Rewind Pod. And uh, we met on Clubhouse. And one of the cool things about Malika is that she has a breadth and wealth of knowledge of all things basketball. She's been watching the damn game for 50 years almost, okay? 
And she wants to have these phenomenal conversations that, generally speaking, aren't held in the mainstream idea of what basketball coverage is. And, and I liken it to Slam Magazine, uh, to Double XL, to Dime, to the culture of what basketball has become. And she has a show tonight, and there's a hundred of you here. Like, I would at least, at least want 10 retweets. She has a show on here. Uh, and it's centered around JUCO, and not just JUCO uh, that's popular, but all of JUCO. She's going to have coaches, players, former players. Last Chance U, uh, the the docu series that swept the country, right, covering football, did the same with basketball. Talking about East LA, and if you don't know what the California JUCO circuit is, Texas has a fantastic one. The South is starting to build theirs up. It is a needed facsimile of basketball existence for a lot of players because they do not have the same grades. They do not have the same economic uh, advantage or outreach as other players do. And this is the only path that's viable to them. But it's been increasingly now a chosen path as well. So you're going to get a great conversation about what Juco Ball was what it is, the good, the bad, and the entertaining. Tonight, hop in here. The tweet's up there. Like it. Retweet it. There's 107 people going. And I told her this. I told her, you will be next. Because this is how good she is. Do us the favor. Listen for yourself. You'll be hooked. The Rewind Pod tonight. Check it out. Um... All right, there. Uh, JF wants to come up and say something. I don't know. Uh, JF, you got like 30 seconds. Yeah, Chris, I just want to say that um, those documentary, uh, documentary series, The Last Chance to Use, I think they did a good job on basketball, but I hope they go back to football. Um, there's a much-needed conversation to be had about uh, football juco and how it's dying out and how football juco actually produced uh, guys like Cam Newton, uh, Jason Pierre-Paul, Levante David. So I know there's a basketball side for it, but the football side is even bigger. Well, maybe you should uh, look into to talking to Malika and maybe uh, setting that up in the future. But we're we're doing basketball tonight. Cause, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward for that yeah. one. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Jada wakanda has got something, and then uh, we're going to get Royce in here. Uh, as a Warriors or Steph fan, we'll get his take real quick. And then uh, we'll close out with the last game, Nuggets and Kings. We'll talk about uh, the games tonight. And then we talk about the MVP big board because a lot of y'all just that y'all don't get it. Y'all really don't get it. And y'all really like Jason Tatum. And I totally get why you like him, but you aren't getting the MVP big board, nor are you understanding how the MVP is voted. Uh, Jay, go ahead and we'll go to Royce and we'll get the reset. Hey, Chris, do you know who Ty Jerome was drafted by? Uh, Oklahoma City? The 76ers. Shoot. Do you know how much money he's making? Uh, More than I am. $2.7 million over the lifetime of his four-year contract as a, as a late first-round pick. Um, Do you know how many points he's averaging? More than I am. Seven. Do you know how many points PJ Tucker is averaging? Barely more than I am. <laughs> Three point four. Do you know how much you're paying PJ Tucker? More than me and more than Ty Jerome combined. Go drink some water, Jay. Thirty million dollars. Go drink some water. Hey, no, the funny thing oh. about Ty Jerome. He used to cook Duke in college. I mean, look. Yeah, he's a good player. I used to hate that guy in college. Really, you know. Uh, JF, 30 seconds. Go. Go. My bad. No, I was just wondering, uh, did we talk about the Killian Hayes uh, knockout? Uh, yeah, I mean, like we we briefly mentioned it. I'm 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 kind of, I'm not going to get involved in this. Like. Killian Hayes was shoved. People are trying to say subjectively the shove wasn't bad. It's not up to you. It's up to Killian Hayes. He felt it was bad enough to respond in the way he did. He was wrong. He deserves a suspension. Uh, I hope Mo Wagner is not uh, you know, seriously impacted in concussion. What I'm hoping 
is like in boxing, you can hit certain parts uh, and just knock somebody out because of the synaptic relay is interfered with as opposed to actually having swelling of the brain. Um, but yeah, like it's just, it's a bad look. Like, so, it's, it's just a bad look, and I don't really particularly feel like talking about it because you can't legislate that out the game. No, I was just going to ask, do you think it was a, a, a harder hit than Nikola Jovic on Markeith Morris? Because I think uh, if Wagner comes back, man, that says a lot about Markeith. Um, I think both were different. Uh, Killian Hayes is 6'5", a buck 90. Jokic is 6'11", 260. And where and how it was done is different. Uh, Killian Hayes hit him either in the back uh, or the top of the C-spine, depending upon how you want to argue it and how you want to view it. Whereas Nikola Jokic essentially body-checked Morris uh, in the square of the back. So when you look at anatomy and physiology, the reason why I would be more concerned with Morris's injury long-term uh, was whiplash one is not a joke. Two, that affected his C-spine and his lumbar, uh, which then interferes with breathing, moving your arms up and down, walking, sitting, standing. Um, whereas if, if what we're seeing in Detroit is what happened, you're looking at the initial impact and then maybe secondary impact as it goes down, but it looks as though he was caught by the players. Right. This is why I don't really get into injuries. Uh, full disclosure, prior to myself having cancer, I was putting my PA packet to be a physician's assistant. I understand battlefield injuries and mechanics very well as a, a combat medic in, in the military. I have treated uh, and, and assisted in treatment of injured people. Um, so, yeah, completely different injury. The mechanism, mechanism of injury is different. The force factors are different which is why I don't get into it because most people don't see injuries the same way. You're a smart dude, Chris. Um, if, if you're looking for a podcast, there's a podcast out there. I'll get the name for it. Uh, this is what he does. He breaks down all of these sports injuries, all sports all year long. Um, appreciate it, JF. All right. Uh, Royce, are you with us? Uh, you've tried to come up now twice. I want to make sure people can hear your voice. People can hear your voice. Yo, 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 I am here. What's up? Wow, that's a lot wow, of energy. That's a lot of energy. Ain't yes, a delay. Sir. Ain't a delay. Yes, Damn. sir. Sorry about Damn. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I I am a uh, person that has more than one team. I am Shot Town first uh, from Chicago, but I do uh, oh. go to State also oh, my team too. Oh, hell no. Hey, hey, I'm keeping it real. Hey, I believe in more than one oh, team. Like I said, I, I, my hometown team is always number one, but I keep another team because I have the emotional heartbreak. So I always keep an extra team that I like throughout all my years let, since I was let, little. Let, let me let me ask you something, boys. I'm yes, a, sir. I'm going I'm to I'm put you on mute real quick. Um, the, the echo is killing me. Do you think you've had more heartache as a Chicago Bulls fan than I have had as a Sixers fan? Yes or no? You're on mute. Don't forget, I put you on mute. You got to come off. Come off. Uh, no, not not in recent well, recent years, last uh, twenty, I guess twenty five or something. But yeah, so I've yeah, got so one I've team. I've got one team. That's all, yeah. I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. But but I want to get on this because I've been hearing everybody talk about this before about the Bulls. They're not going to blow it up. Even if I wanted them to, which I don't really want them to fully blow it up, they're not blowing it up. This ownership is not going to do it. They want to be in playoff in good territory and hope they can possibly get better. Now, it's not going to happen. Everybody's going to blow this up. It's not going to happen. They're not going to trade. I, I don't see them trading all the big three. They'll probably trade one of them. One of them and possibly Caruso or one of the other role players. They're not trading this. This They're not blowing it up. No matter how much everybody wants it to, they're just not. Like, it's just not going to happen. And I understand why, but there's just sometimes, like I said, with Lonzo being out, I'm not worried, but he's not coming back this year most likely. I'm not talking about that as a big thing. But they're just in a limbo. And I, I kind of see, like I said, they're definitely not good enough, 
but I'm not free fully rebuilding. We don't have our draft pick. It's top four protected, so we can't tank for Wimbayana. Everybody keeps talking about this Wimbayana to st- sell the team and trade everybody. It's not going to happen. And we have some good players. The problem is we don't have leadership in our best players. They're great offensive players, but they don't have the defensive, but they don't have the other leadership. But DeMar DeRozan is close, but he still doesn't talk to people enough. And if he doesn't call them out and say, what the hell are y'all doing? Type shit. He he'll say some things, but he'll say it a nice way. We need like a Jay Crowder, uh, some type of like Patrick PJ Tucker, Patrick Beverly. I don't even I don't care if they don't play. I just want them on the bench to get in these dudes' faces and tell them what the hell are y'all doing? Y'all playing soft as hell. Sorry for the uh, language, but anyways, that's the biggest issue with the Bulls, and they're not blowing up. I understand, guys. Uh, I understand you guys saying it, but it's not gonna happen. Oh um, no, I I don't think they're blowing it up. Yeah. I, yeah, and like I, I, think, I think they tied themselves, they tied themselves to, Zach to Zach Levine and Billy Donovan. And Billy Donovan. Yeah. They're going to they're gonna decide between Vooch, between Vooch and DeRozan. And DeRozan. Yeah. For sure, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yep. Or, yeah. or possibly getting rid of uh, Caruso or somebody else. I think they're just going to try to possibly just get another player in to just hopefully make them a little better this year. Uh, Vooch is probably going to be the most likely one because I've been here and I don't think they're going to trade DeMar with the way he's still playing unless there's really uh, – the Zach and DeMar thing is not a big issue. People are saying it's a big issue. Uh, it, I don't think it's a big issue just because they were losing and then everything comes out and then the media gets a hold of it and gets blown out of proportion. So – yeah, that's what I'm yeah, talking about they, that. Yeah, they, <laughs> they play, they play, they play a, similar a similar role, role and that's and why, that's why there's, there's division, division naturally. naturally. But Zeke is the guy that's outside of the outside circle. Outside of the circle. Yeah, he is. He is. And and I like Vooch, but in every game, there's certain games where he just is not good enough to be our third best player. Like, even if we give him the ball, everybody will say we just give him the ball to post. And it only works against teams that are shorter. When we go against these top tier teams, he becomes more of a jump shooter because he's not he's not soft, but he's just not tough enough on these taller sitters. Like, when he goes against Valid Tunis and like the even Brooke Lopez, some of these big sitters, he and, and B, he just gets demolished against them. Like, <laughs> I mean, against uh, some other players, though, he'd be killing them. He'd be working. He got the little little fakes, little footwork. I'd be liking it, but other times he just does not have it. So it's just looking like he's going to have to be possibly the odd man out and maybe uh, Caruso or one of the other role players to try to get something else to put around Zach and DeMar. All right. Well, definitely right, well, appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to put you on, on, you on, on mute again. <laughs> I, I, the, the, the echo just kills. Um one, if that's the way I'm sound, I'm sorry to all of you having to listen to me speak. Like, my word, I didn't realize it sounded that bad. Uh, two, uh, Royce has reached out a couple of times, and he's going to be working with our YouTube coordinator, Justin Patton, to get some of these reaction videos up here. Uh, so, like, as I had said before, um, if you are a content creator, like, we've got, we've got a place for you, uh, and all you have to do is uh, what we've already set out. And in terms of writing... Uh, Evan Moore has reached out. We're going to get that uh, started up at the beginning of uh, next year as well uh, so that you'll have a place to publish what you want to write. Um, so if you do want that, like just keep your head out on there on a swivel um, and, and do what Royce does and reach out. That's, that's what we're here for. Um, one last game uh, real quick. Uh, the Nuggets and the Kings, phenomenal game, 127-126. Uh, Sacramento really poured it on in the fourth quarter. Denver really dominated in the first quarter. And listen, um, and I, I saved this game for last, obviously, to transition also uh, into this NBA, M- NBA MVP big board here. Nikola Jokic is so dominant statistically, right, that it is hard to explain to people who don't watch enough Nikola Jokic. And, and, it's very hard to watch all these games. Uh, I was able to watch every single game up until the Thanksgiving break. I'm now at about 60%, right? As the season goes on and life tends to pick up around the holidays, you know, I, I start cutting back. And then by the time the trade the trade deadline approaches, I'm at about 40%, uh, but usually at the top half, right? Uh, because as teams start falling out, all you're really watching it in my position is for like player development and trends. Nikola Jokic can walk into any game he wants to and average 40 points while not taking away from his team. 
hear, hear that, what I said. He can walk into any NBA game and average 40 points without taking away from his team. And currently, to me, healthy, there are only three players other than Jokic that can do this. Steph, Embiid, and Luka. And the reason why are for all different reasons. Number one, Steph is Steph. Uh, he's the, the best shooter all time, top guard of all time in that discussion. Uh, and the offensive system is predicated around him to get him activated. Uh, and he does a good job of balancing it by getting his teammates set up, even though he's the secondary facilitator. Uh, Joel Embiid, because he's just that good and dominant and is built into the system uh, of Philadelphia to get him to the line 15 times per game, as well as get him 20 shots. So he always has a shot at 40 points. Um, and then Luca, because like Steph, the system is predicated on his success for team success. Uh, Jason Tatum is close. He's close. But in order to get him to 50, uh, he would have to go from nine threes attempted per game to like 11 and then still add two more shots. And at that point, he's taken away from the production of Boston. Last night, 127-126, the Kings lighting the beam with the return uh, of a couple of players. Uh, DeMontis Simonis is back. He'll be managing the pain uh, with an obs- uh, 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 essentially a partially torn thumb ligament. Uh, he had 31, 10, and 5. De'Aaron Fox, 31 and 13 assists. Uh, and then the return of Malik Monk. Like, he wasn't hurt, but we know who Malik Monk is. And, like, he just disappeared for a few games. Well, he was back last night. Uh, 33 points off the bench, 12 for 21, 4 for 8, 5 for 6. Um, reintroducing himself uh, as this generation's Lou Will. And uh, the Kings are for real. I, I, are they for real legit title contenders? I don't think so. Uh, But they are probably the barometer now for the West. I think uh, if you are trying to get into the top six, you're looking at six and you have to be better than the Kings. And I don't see a lot of teams currently as comprised in the West uh, better than the Kings. Also, uh, for Denver, this is another game that Jokic was able to dominate despite only having, quote, one helper uh, being healthy in Michael Porter Jr. Bones Highland started in place of Jamal Murray played better than what Jamal Murray's played all season long. 20 points, 11 assists, five boards. Uh, The trade they made with Washington to bring leadership and defense. uh, KCP, yeah, ain't happening. Uh, Bruce Brown didn't play. Zeke Najee got the start, seven for nine. That's how good uh, Jokic is. So, like, when we look at the uh, the top five here, or, or the leaderboard for the MVP, I want to make sure that I get in Jason Tatum's defense. Uh, This is from Nat, right? She's going to say I'm a hater because everybody's saying I'm a hater. Here's what Nat says. Tatum came into the season with clear improvements. Better floater game. Mid-range, using uh, using their mid-range more. He's a better defender and a better leader. He's averaging 31, 8, and 4. A new coach who's still clearly learning how to be a head coach. Yet Tatum is leading. He's leading the team. When timeouts are not called, he's leading the team. Even when timeouts are called, he's leading the team. He's scoring four more points than last year per game. He's beating every MVP candidate except for Steph. He's also done this uh, with Jalen Brown missing a couple of games, Robert Williams being out the majority of the season, Al Horford, who's like 80. Not really, but really. Same but different. He's played the three, the four, and even small ball five, even the two. If he's not number one, he deserves to be top two at least. Put some respect on his name, Chris. It's from that. There you go. Um, I make this list on on a lot of different reasons. Uh, One of the main reasons that factor into this list is how NBA MVP voting goes. And this is where the likes of Jason Tatum is going to run into a a problem. And the problem is the success of his teammate, Jalen Brown. If you go back in the history of the NBA, um, 
most duos who are that equally good because like Jalen Brown is not demonstrably not as good as Jason Tatum. They, they will siphon votes. The one quote B player takes votes away from the one quote a player happens everywhere in NBA history, except for one time by the name of Michael Jeffrey Jordan. And it was really not even one, like maybe one time there was a sniff where people started giving Scottie Pippen the actual, you know, um, credit he deserved in real time. But everybody knew it was Mike. Everybody knew it was his MVP. And we can't necessarily say that with Jason Tatum because we understand how these uh, voters are going to vote. There is going to be enough people who will use the Jalen Brown success as a, eh, but really, if we put Luka in a Boston uniform and Tatum in Dallas, is Dallas really doing what they're doing with Luka? And if we put Luka in Boston, doesn't Boston have like 31 wins? They will find the reason why. And this is why Jason Tatum is lower in my big board. Because it's just simply how that MVP voting is going to work, right? Um, so, like, I don't view this as a disrespect thing. I just kind of view this as a, hey, y'all always get mad at the media. Let me give you, like, a big board representative of what they're actually talking about as opposed to what they're putting out and that you click on. Because remember, when, they're, when you're putting out something to click on, they're trying to get clicks. So they're going to try to get you to come in here with some click. Uh, I'm not. I'm trying to give you straight up. If the season were to end today, here's your MVP list. Like, no lie. Go up and down and tell me you don't see this happen. If the season ended today with the Nuggets and the first seed in the West tied with the New Orleans Pelicans, Nikola Jokic is in your back-to-back-to-back MVP. Coming off of 10 straight wins. Actually, I think it's 11. They're like 12 or 13 in their last 14 games. Kevin Durant has carried the Brooklyn Nets through the tumult, 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 tumultuous craziness, whatever adjective you want to use, uh, situation of, of Kyrie Irving, right? To now be the hottest team in the league, second behind Boston, yet not doing it with Kyrie Irving, Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, Joe Harris, um, even Nicholas Claxton has missed like 20% of his games. Royce O'Neal has been the most consistent player Kevin Durant has played with until recently with Kyrie Irving. So, like, yeah, he's there. And why is he there ahead of someone like Jason Tatum? Efficiency. Shoots less, makes more, averages the same. And then you have Luka. Like, if Luka, if Dallas was one or two, guess who's on top of this list? It ain't Jokic. It's Luka. The dude is out of his mind. Nobody in the league is producing like Luka Doncic. And these are just facts, right? Like, you go see the points, you go see the rebounds, you go see the steals, you see the improvement in defensive stats, and all we complain about is he looks fat and he looks like he plays lazy. Yet no player, including Jokic, is outperforming. Second on the production list, like the all-production list, is Jason Tatum. Because he shoots threes. And Nikola Jokic doesn't. Jokic out-rebounds him. He out-assists him. They play same defensive metrics. He's more efficient, but he doesn't shoot threes. Like, imagine if Jokic was out there making two out of four and a half attempts. And then to round it off, um, I've been trying to tell you this now for three weeks. This Zion Williamson MVP discussion is coming. Whether you like it or not, it is coming. It is coming this season. It will happen after the New Year's as long as he stays healthy. Why? He's got a tied position in first with Denver Nuggets, despite without Brandon Ingram, Herb Jones. Um, Jonas Valanciunas missed like a week in between uh, November and December. Uh, Trey Murphy's been in and out of the starting lineup. He's had to play with Jackson Hayes and has made Jackson Hayes look like a relevant professional which, by the way, should be his own reward because, damn, four years, they didn't want to pick up his option. Now Zion's healthy. Bro looks like he can play. Make it make sense. So there you go. I want to hear what your thoughts are. Uh, Those are my five. 
Uh, the next five are Giannis, Steph, Joel, John, Jalen. Uh, Giannis is he's at he, he's at the apex of where he can be. Uh, it, it's going to be tied to Milwaukee, but it just looks bad because there isn't the same type of energy behind it. Steph, because he's hurt. And I've already told a couple people who reached out, has Steph not been hurt? Like we're talking either Jason Tatum or Zion Williamson not being in the top five. Like that's how close it is in terms of how I think the voters will go. Uh, Joel Embiid, I mean, it is what it is. Probably the most offensive dominant big in the league. Um, I, 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 I tried. I tried. But like the sixes are the fifth seed. We're not looking too terribly great. Like we're looking like we're we're beating teams and then we're like not playing. Uh, John Morant, we we cannot deny what he's done for Memphis. People lay, they they lambasted him last year uh, when he was out, and Desmond Bain carried the team. Well, Desmond Bain was out; he carried the team. Ain't nobody running the Jaws defense. He's been phenomenal. He's improved this year. Uh, the issue is, I don't think he can improve enough. And then you have Jalen Brown, who would be higher on this list if it wasn't for Jason Tatum. All right, there you go. My big board will give you the top 10. It'll give you the top five set with the next five up. Uh, we'll go to Jada Wakanda for his thoughts. Jay, go ahead. Um, phenomenal list. I would actually rate Embiid higher. Um, Max has been out. Harden's been out. Um yeah, like Shea can't Milton. do it. I can't do it. Brooklyn has had the same injuries. Katie's got his 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 squad in the second. I, he does. He, Denver's he does. had the same injuries. He's got his squad in first. Zion has his squad in first. Has had the same injuries. I can't. Like, what what am I gonna do? No, no, no. I hear you, but I would I would argue that Philly missing Maxi and Harden is a bigger blow than what KD was dealing with. Um, the the point differential of the 76ers is, is similar and, and slightly better than the Brooklyn Nets, is, is slightly better than the Denver Nuggets, um, which means on a, on a game-by-game basis, you could argue that Embiid's impact <clears throat> – um, based also on the defense, like Embiid's defense is also underrated because his offense is so phenomenal. Um, and it's not like Philly has a whole bunch of stoppers because it's not like Doc Rivers is actually playing Matisse Thibault. Well, he ain't um, playing no stoppers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, and so Embiid is really not only giving you the offense; he's also giving you. Jaron Jackson Jr. S defense, and I think that's not what's talked about, and that's why I would have him be higher, is because not only is he having to carry the offensive end, he's having to clean up a lot on the defensive end, and with with KD, Claxton has kind of been there for him as a security blanket all year, and um, and it's not to diminish KD, this, like you said, this race is really, really tight, we're really you know, splitting fish hairs. Um, and so, but that's that's my only thought, is that Embiid has done more with less than Zion has, even though Zion is one. But the Pelicans are 20 and 12. Embiid is 20 and 13. Tw- so, 22 and 12. Yeah, I'm sorry, 22 and 12. Better so point Embiid, differential, too. Yeah. Um, and that's, you know, Herb Jones has been available. Uh, Dyson Daniels has been amazing off the bench as a rookie. He's kind of like this utility knife. You can start him, you can bench him, you can play him as the backup one, two, three, doesn't matter. Um, and, and Zion's been phenomenal. Um, I just, from start point of the season till now, I still think Embiid has been more impressive than Zion as lights out as Zion has been the last, what, three games, four games. Um, And like I said, I know we're splitting splitting fish hairs with this, but that's that's my (laughs) only – So so also boosting Zion's um, argument is last year the New Orleans Pelicans were 36 of 46. 
Yeah, but after the CJ trade, they were on a forty. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the, that don't matter. Like the the I, overall, I, they're gonna the, they're gonna know. have an overall improvement of up to twenty games. Yeah, no, Zion's a superstar. Like Zion, um, I ain't gonna lie. Early in his career, I was calling him the Dinye ball uh, baller. You can look up the tweet. <laughs> I wanted him to be better. Um, I don't. I'm not saying he's like he took my challenge, but he took the challenge of being better, taking better care of his body, getting back in shape, and he's done that. And he's become the superstar that we all, you know, saw and wanted him to be. And there's Zion is showing the reason why he went one one, um, in the draft, and and it's been a phenomenal. Uh, master class. You know, uh, sh- putting together. Sh- shout out to Landon Buford. He's got the correct uh, figures. Fourteen and one in the last fifteen games for the the Nets. Nasty, <sighs> nasty. Um, what does like like what does Jason Tatum need to do to get to number one? Uh, was was a question that was asked to me. Another question was asked: What does Kevin Durant need to do to get to number one? And my answer to you. Is nothing like it, at this point? Nikola Jokic is so statistically dominant that the Denver Nuggets have to fall out of the first or second spot in the West. Like that, uh, this was the same argument for Giannis, and and this is why I was trying to tell people like there's going to be Giannis fatigue, and, and the difference between Giannis fatigue and why there isn't as much Jokic fatigue is that people actually like Jokic's game. People always want more from Giannis. Like they they want they want more than just uh, get a wall run and drive to the basket and get to the to the free throw line, right? And and Jokic doesn't do that. So when they watch Jokic, uh, it, it's just more aesthetically pleasing. So they are more dispositioned to want to vote for him. Jason Tatum has that problem. Jason Tatum also has the problem with Jalen Brown. So like, what can Jason Tatum do? He needs to continue to do what he's doing, uh, but hope that Jokic and the Nuggets don't last. If that happens, he moves to the top three, and at that point, it's between him and KD. So if he stays in the first, I'm expecting by the end of the season uh, that it'll be between those two. And then I think that in the West, uh, it'll be between Jokic and Zion or Steph Curry if he comes back for Golden State and they go on a tear. And, and, like, that's how um, Sean with the W, hosted live from the Mecca, how he comes to the saying is, like, not all progress is linear. This is part of Jason Tatum's progress, and it's not going to be linear, and a lot of people just aren't going to like it. But I'm, I'm here. I'm here to listen to you, not like it. I'm here to have this discussion because I'm not disagreeing with the greatness of Jason Tatum. Like, just imagine if he had Doc Rivers as his coach. Be scary. <laughs> um, I I agree with what you what you said. I think you don't think there's going to be Jokic fatigue. No, no, because like uh, when you go into it, it's going to be: Are you going to give it to Jokic or Ja? Ja has so much negative credit. I'm surprised his credit cards work at Macy's. Like. People oh, yeah, just nah. don't like him any longer. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah. like, yeah, no. Nah. Ja, ja is definitely having to get um, a co-borrower to use cash at an ATM. It's, it's right? Crazy. Like, like, like people, like, oh, it's cool, it's great, and then now people are like, bro, stop dancing. And then what yeah. do they do? Of course, they're going to double down and do more dancing. I don't care whether he dances or not. I like it. I'm here for it. Uh, my issue oh, to... Here. Yeah, my issue to them is you can't get mad at the people who aren't. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Oh yeah, no. I I want I want the Grizzlies to keep being the Grizzlies. What I do want the Grizzlies to do is stop beefing with the refs. Take some accountability. Well, that too. Like take some accountability. Get out to shooters. And um, if you're going to play defense like the Toronto Raptors, then commit to it. Actually, foul every time down. Don't foul make them call time. it. Yeah, make them call. It. Like, if you're going to play defense like the Raptors and play defense like the Raptors, but y'all have to. But the reason why the Raptors get away with it is because they all do it, one through twelve. 
They all do it. They all are going to grab you on the drive. They're all going to hip check you. They're all going to, you know, um, slightly move during the screen. They're all going to slightly dip their shoulder when they're fighting through the screen. And it, we didn't even, team, you know what? We didn't even talk about the Raptors today. And we should like the Raptors. No, we shouldn't. They are bad right now. Let me. I need. I need to. I need to uh, finish one point because we need to get out of here. Got like a minute left, Jay. Uh, the last point I, I wanted to make with the big board is it's going to come down to KD and Jason Tatum in the East, right? Joel Embiid is the odd man out. It's going to come down between Nikola Jokic and Zion Williamson in the West. Luka Doncic right now is that odd man out, despite his production. And, and unless the Dallas Mavericks can shoot up to a top two or three spot, Luke is always going to be permanently number three because people are going to make the argument, yeah, but he ain't winning. Uh, and that leaves Steph because really, in all honesty, at the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody was playing better than this man. And now we have to go an X amount of time without him. And, like, he's still going to come back. And, like, if the, if the Golden State Warriors hop back up to number two, if the Golden State Warriors win 55 games and Steph Curry is averaging 30 points with five threes, six assists, five boards, um, I don't see why he wouldn't be top three. And, and like, that's what's really interesting about this uh, year is that it literally is that wide open for everybody not named Nikola Jokic as long as Nikola Jokic does what he's doing and Denver continues to win. Uh, that's what I got, Jay. 30 seconds. I got to get out of here. What happens in a world if the Clippers get on a run and they finish two? Not a damn thing. Okay, fair enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we are brought to you by Flanders.com. And if you are a Clippers fan, I am sorry I just hurt your feelings because it means nothing. It means nada because nobody trusts the Clippers like they trust the Chicago Bulls because we just don't think they're going to be healthy. Like, it's just there. It's bad luck. Love Tido. Ty Lu, underrated coach. Greatness of Doc Rivers. Uh, all right. We got games tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got games tonight. That's right. Oklahoma City and Charlotte at 7. Cleveland at Indiana at 7. The only reason why we don't talk about SGA that much is because, well, you know what? They're just not a serious team about winning. Like, they were trying to tank. They realized they're too good to tank, and so they're in purgatory. Uh, Boston hosts the Clippers. 7.30, NBA TV. Toronto, Memphis, 7.30, League Pass. San Antonio hosts New York. Dallas hosts Houston, 8 and 8.30, League Pass. Uh, back tomorrow, 10 a.m. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and play this here now. Whoops, not that one, this one. Uh, because y'all need to hear it again. I tried to tell you. This is the last time of me trying to tell you. This Zion Williamson MVP agenda is going to be nasty. If he stays healthy, like, good God, 60-plus field goal percentage, he could end the season at a 60-40-70 split? Like, he's only going to be taking, like, two threes a game. Bro's going to be making one for two. He's going to be, like, averaging more assists than he gets foul attempts. And that's why we're going to start seeing him at the line more often. Big, big second half of the season, I think, for Zion. See you tomorrow, 10 a.m. Peace out.